slides about uh, bio biologically uh, inspired consensus. No, I saw I saw Gary mentioned it a few times in Discord, but that, that was about it. Yeah, so, I mean, what he's doing now in that last Casper ed episode uh, is uh, is a bit different, and he's talking about this harness, you know, where we uh, we can talk about the resources that these validators uh, need to to be aware of to um, effectively deploy contracts and I, I I just I'm I'm not quite sure yet where he's going with all this Casper discussion. Uh, he he we started this this adventure trying to solve the FLP problem using error correcting code. And now we've gotten into something completely different. Uh, yes. which, are, are we still talking about the uh, space time calculus and all the, the different contexts and error correcting codes and somehow this, this stuff also relates to that? Yes. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, cool. But th there are like two, two, uh, two things. One is the error correcting codes which I understand as uh, uh, so uh, uh, application of this is to uh, res uh, resend the, the, the messages. So, <clears throat> and the, the other thing is, uh, this is like a, a, exactly like, a, you know, if you want to uh, send a zero and one, you, you, you can uh, uh, do it three times and uh, yeah, it's like a redundancy kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and and, <clears throat> and uh, the the other thing is uh, uh, this uh, biologically inspired consensus, which uh, uh, which has two two different sides of uh, like a food and an energy in on on two different. Uh, uh, yeah, sure they, they seek food, which which I'm assuming would be rev. Mm. And then they convert that into energy, which I'm guessing would be uh, phlogiston or flow. Mm. Yeah. But they, but they internally, they both replicate, they carry out their purpose, which is the, the process, the internal processes, which they contain. So they have a purpose, they, they replicate and they seek food. They've got their, you know, there, there are three aspects to them, which any one of which are, you know, are worthy of investigation, but, but these, these cell harnesses are, seem to be some sort of, uh, They seem to be some sort of object that he's envisioning us using in a new model of computation. Am I am I stretching that too far? It's, um, so, are these things like uh, some sort of contract, or they're they're like automized some or automated somehow? Do we want to go through the slides? Yeah, uh, uh, I think that would be great. Would I would find that really helpful. Slides because the slides, uh, you know, kind of, kind of help. But do, does anybody have a link to that? Uh, towards a living, it's a PDF uh, file, I think. Yeah, yeah, I have it. Here it is. So what? What uh, I'm confused is. Uh, uh, th there is no context in in, uh, in his uh, samples. So this uh, living cell is a regular rolling code that we can write today. And but where is the, the context? Uh, uh, do we need this change to have space-time calculus or we can do it in, in this way? 
Wait, so you're saying there, uh, we're not talking about these communication contexts anymore in, in this, um, yeah, in, 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 this, in, stuff. in, in these examples, yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I totally like, I like uh, uh, this way of, uh, you know, uh, uh, dying or forgetting. I think yeah. it's not real necessary to, to have this kind of thing. So you can just forget of something or delete something. Mm. But as, as you see, there, there is no this, this uh, uh, special context. Yeah. So how, how this is related to, to context? Yeah, I don't, I don't know how he made the jump from, from talking about the, the, the context to this, but once we had come up with those contexts, we had created this, this space-time uh, paradigm which he jumped off into this with, you know, his uh, Einstein field equations and all that, that business. One thing that I find interesting is this, you know, walking down through this sequence, you know, he gets some, he gets some crypto. And so I'm thinking that would be the equivalent of someone calling this contract, this, this contract, right? And but, uh, this contract is executed by a validator. Uh, I mean, va validator is this contract. And uh, uh, if you if you scroll down uh, a little more, uh, there is a PS uh, that accepts uh, a quote B. Uh, I think uh, a little more. Uh, when P uh, accept not only S, yeah, exactly. And uh, the B is uh, is uh, a contract that, that you sent uh, to validator to, to execute. Does this make sense? Yes, but I'm wondering what what other I mean. You're saying this is a this, this is not used by the the validator. This is the validator. Yeah, and the, the validator can can die if if he, if uh, he's not doing uh, what, what he's supposed to do. Okay. So we, we, we want we want a way to starve a validator, which is not uh, agreeing with uh, with the, our consensus. Is that like unbonding or uh, slashing in any way? Yeah, I, I, I think I, I think like, like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I want to share the, the link. Uh, DC Casey asked for the slides to that presentation. I'm going to share this link over there. Does somebody else want to take the screen share? Sure. This seems like like uh, uh, the validator will accept uh, uh, sequentially uh, uh, um, contracts from from uh, deploys, right? Or or this is like a, just a simple example, which which is sequential. Because I'm I'm, I'm thinking that uh, like a, like a cell, a living organism, the the, the one thing that uh, is like for for me. The most important is uh, is is boundary of this uh, of this cell. Mm. So in, in a sense, you know, if you are some kind of organism, you you can you can eat, but you cannot eat for the whole year. <laughs> you can you can eat for for one day, and <laughs> if you eat too much, is that good? Yeah. So, and uh, and and uh, and uh, in, uh, when you are a validator and when you are a, a, a computer program, who will? prevent you to, to eat too much. Mm. So in, in that sense, I'm thinking, uh, how, how, we, how can we uh, have this boundary to, to hold uh, what is uh, enough food for, for this cell or for this validator? And 
is, is this ju just some kind of state that we just modifying and Again, you, you mentioned uh, some uh, some file to share, or okay, I'm 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 lost. What are we talking about now? Uh, I was thinking that uh, that you are mentioned some some uh, uh, some document that you want to share, or oh no no no, I'm sorry, I. I posted the link to this biologically inspired uh, uh, slides in the general channel of, of the Discord because DC Casey wanted the slides and I didn't have the slides to it. On Discord general channel. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just what we were just looking at. I, there's nothing new there. Oh, okay. Uh, this thing. So I have a, a related but kind of a tangential question. Uh, is choice now implemented in rolling or has it always been and I've just been really, uh, uh, I don't know, unobservant? Uh, choice, uh, this plus, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm also a little confused. And uh, okay, I, I, I saw... I saw they put it in the spec, and, and uh, also this like uh, case matching syntax is a little bit different than I thought it was um, intended to be. But but I mean I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, I was also a little confused, and with this okay. plus, and Greg, 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 Greg was uh, mentioned. Uh, uh, this is uh, just like uh, yeah, as you said, this is like a like a choice, but. Uh, this other stuff are are um, uh, garbage collected. In in that sense, uh, uh, this is something different. Okay. Yeah. Can we go through one of these slides here? Because I'm I'm not sure I totally understand uh, what's what the intention is. Yeah. Maybe uh, even earlier before we introduce the the context be. Yeah, something, uh, well, I guess it still has a context B, but either way, I don't know if that makes it any more complicated. No, it you're right, it was a little more simple uh, before he... Yeah, he, he introduced uh, this two, two, two way of uh, looking at, uh, at, uh, at the food, as, as energy and, and food. And that uh, he presented the simpler example uh, only with uh, one representation. All right, so, so this is just about uh, uh, replication, without something external that you that you run. Okay. Yeah, this is this is like a very simple example in which you uh, get the food. If if you have enough food, you spend it on metabolism, mm -hmm. and you can uh, then you can you can uh, uh, execute this uh, uh, this for for metabolism and you can execute p p s uh, uh, again so you can you know mm. uh, start this start this over yes. I, I'm, I'm i'm not completely clear do you do you take the food and then do something and then die <laughs> or do you take the food do something, take food again, then do something, and... Well, yeah. it looks like you take the food, and if it's enough, then uh, you metabolize into energy, and then with that energy, uh, what does it look like? I don't know. You can do that same same PS process again. So taking more more food, right? Yeah, or or if you have metabolism and some reproduction, which I'm not sure where you're getting that from, but uh, you know, just anything on a reproduction channel, I guess. Then, uh, so what is this D thing here? So reproduction is uh, something that you uh, that you also need uh, for for your off offspring, right? Yeah, right, right. So if we have 
incoming energy on the metabolism channel and also incoming energy on this reproduction channel, then, uh, yeah, it looks like, yeah. So I just don't know what this capital D is there. Uh, D is uh, replication. D is replication. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, that encoding of replication in the row calc or something, right? Uh, I'm not completely sure. Okay. You, I, there's a, he defines an operator in the row calc paper that he calls capital D and it, it's not directly the encoding of replication, but it's the fundamental thing that you need to encode replication in, in, uh, you know, pi calc repli replication in the row calc. What, what does ex exactly mean? Uh, pi calc uh, uh, representation. Yeah. Uh, so, so like replication in, uh, in the pi calc, um, you know, like the bang P process that you can just keep, pulling as many copies of the process P in parallel out as, as you want. Um, we can, there, there's a way to represent that phenomenon in the row calc. And he uses some uh, process that he, he calls D. And uh, what, what, uh, my question is, what is the difference if, if I just, you know, put uh, two processes in par? Um, I'm replicating, right? Or, or this is uh, like a well. Way. The the difference is so. Let's say let's say they're receives, right? And uh, we only have two receives in parallel. Well, uh, okay. And so in row calc, there's only consumable receives, right? There's no persistent stuff. Um, so if you only have two receive two consumable receives in the parallel, well, then two sends would totally consume everything there. Uh, but if you have replication, you can always produce that third one. And then even if there's a third send, you could always produce that fourth one. Oh, oh. Yeah, so it's it's uh, okay. it's a way to get recursion. Somehow replication and recursion are, are fundamentally linked. Um, and I, I guess I, I understand it intuitively in the sense that you can just always produce another copy. Um, but I I'm not... I haven't seen the the direct uh, correlation between them. Oh yeah, this this makes sense. Like a, like a, in, in lambda when you when you have a, a y combinator, you must you must duplicate uh, the arguments for for each branch. So in that sense, maybe this is like uh, related to. Yeah, duplicate. maybe. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I'm I'm starting to get a, a handle on what he's doing here with this part. I mean, I, I think it opens up a whole lot of possibilities for us. Um, I I'm looking forward to the uh, they're they're going to do a, a blog. They were going to do a blog yesterday. On, on one of their newest papers that Mike and Mike. Oh yeah. I, they recorded that podcast yesterday. I don't, I don't know if it's been released yet. I, I didn't look for it, but they, they did it pretty late at night. So I'm assuming it hasn't been. Gotcha. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. That should be pretty cool. Did you guys look at the, that row combinator uh, calculus paper? Yes, I, oh, I yeah. looked at it. Um, I, 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 I need some. I need some discussion on it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, I'm not. Too. I'm not terribly familiar with uh, the combinator calculus from from the pi calculus that Yoshida did originally. But um, yeah, I, the that paper was pretty good. I liked it. Yep. Yeah, it 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 makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it got me into this uh, rabbit hole of type introspection and uh, what reflection is actually doing, which I, I still don't understand it, but uh, I'm getting closer. I'm getting closer. <laughs> this is exactly where I am also. Yeah. <laughs> I'm reading about reflection and uh, especially in Haskell reflection. 
Yeah. Now, now, now I, I, I think I rediscovered uh, the typable and data in, in Haskell. <laughs> yeah, I was. Uh, I I think I was reading something on the Scala, you know, Scala dot uh, Scala Lang dot org website. Um, oh yeah, I was I was reading about maybe you uh, you you were reading the same thing about uh, a staging compiler in Scala. Uh, they call it lightweight modular staging. Oh like. okay. No, I wasn't. I didn't. I didn't see that. I was reading about universes uh, and mirrors. Oh, I was uh, I was on the side uh, of three Lisp, uh, oh. <laughs> and uh, I was uh, I was watching uh, uh, this presentation of uh, I think it's called Nada Amin uh, of language black or something like that of uh, tower, tower, towers of uh, interpreters. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I've uh, watched videos by her before. She's very good. Uh, the, the towers of what? Of uh, in interpreters. Okay, gotcha. I'm going to go watch that too because they, they mentioned that. Where, did, where was that brought up? Uh, <laughs> uh, Greg mentioned that somewhere. Yeah, yeah I, think, I think it's in the, this document. Okay. Uh, uh, at the end. Towers because of interpreters? Yeah, so I, sh I shared a pretty uh, good link on that type introspection and reflection that I found. I thought it was rather understandable, as opposed to most of the stuff I read. And uh, yeah, I, I found a paper that uh, because it's uh, when you when you read about this uh, uh, list, uh the, the paper from from these guys uh, is you know, it's, it's it's written in in a meta circular interpreter. And you know everything is written in meta circular interpreter in in three lists. so it's 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 difficult to 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 understand because you you must understand what is three lists to understand three lists. <laughs> so, okay, so, yeah, I, I remember the conversation. Okay, <laughs> so so uh, uh, there there is another paper that explained explains the same the same thing without uh, uh, the same interpreter. You know. That you are explaining. Mm. So uh, I started to, to read that, and, uh, but this, this is like a very very interesting idea. To yeah, this is like the the, the, the most important thing that uh, uh, drove me to to Greg's uh, work. This uh, reflection, I think this this. Uh, oh yeah, interesting. Because I, I was using reflection in C sharp, which was very very. Powerful. It's, it's not very nice, but it's very powerful because you, know, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Okay. So, but in 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 this context. Uh, This replication is uh, only for uh, only to, to to replicate what exactly? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Is it the validator that's replicating? He's replicating this B, and this B is. Uh, Oh, what what is B? This user contract or hmm. I'm, I'm not completely sure. Uh, okay, first introduce. Yeah, this this B is a running contract. Running contract. B is a running. So that's the so that's the validator's proposal. But there, there is also yeah. But there, uh, uh, there is also this P, which is run in parallel with uh, with uh, uh, user contracts, and and this P is uh, validated. Or or I was thinking that uh, maybe this P is a validator message uh, that validator sent. So. You know, you, you all validators uh, are sending messages, and uh, 
in, in, the, in the beginning, all they all have like a, their their own view what what will be the next block. But after some conversation, they will decide that uh, some of these messages uh, should die because you know the order of receiving is uh, is uh, uh, is in, in, go, goes in that direction. So only one message is like the, the real uh, a true truth that must be recorded in the next block. Mm. Yeah, I'm starting to get a sense here of, of, uh, you know, he talks about, oh goodness, um, the stake being represented as So what these things are doing, in, in my mind, is they're taking this, the stake that was provided initially and they're, they're uh, spawning off as many uh, copies of, yeah. of, 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 you know, as many copies as the the food will allow, and they and they do, and they go through all their uh, their the routine of you know housekeeping and and, uh, and and so this thing just loops until all the all the stake is used up in in uh, copies of these contracts, and so I'm starting to get a sense of. Uh, you know, these things spawning these these trees that go down and and and, and they, they literally just you know bloom when the initial contract is presented and they go down and until all their resources are, are used up and then somewhere in there these they have their function and it once their function is is complete I suppose they stop spawning and uh, and and then return all the unused resources to the to the to the person who provided them initially. Uh, you're talking about execution of user user uh, uh, contracts contracts, right? Yeah, uh, because you 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 said that uh, they're they're using their their stake to to spawn new. New processes, and I, I'm not I'm not completely clear why why are you saying they will use their stake? Why, why is that? This is like like a food or well, it, it it it's a mechanism so that so that so so that the contract can get. Uh, completed as efficiently as possible with the resources available and but the the, the, the resources for for running contracts uh, must uh, 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 deploy must give the the resource to, to run the contract not okay. the validator well but the validator will, will take his uh, percentage of uh, like a like a, a, his profit to, to run contract. Okay, so so now this is where I'm 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 uh, kind of losing Greg's drift because he, he was coming up with a model for us to look at at the the resources available. Yeah, and I, I, I guess I need to go back through his videos and listen to those discussions uh, again. But if, if, if you remember uh, his uh, slide, but but what I'm saying is, I don't really understand how this proof of stake business is all going to work and I see him addressing that here in this this latest presentation so I, I think that's our bottom line 
in understanding where he's going with this. Uh, he was he was saying that uh, staking is uh, uh, all these three things. And I'm, I'm not sure what, what this means. What does this have to do with consensus? This is our staking. But this is not some kind of uh, some some uh, 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 amount of rep that you holding somewhere. This is this, this is the 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 rev you provided for these contracts to get run. But this is not staking for for validating, right? Well, that, that's my question. Yeah, uh, what is he talking about here? Well, I'm I'm I'm, I'm also confused. <laughs> well, on slide eleven, he shows the token and the to a token and gas. Yeah, and that's different from staking, right? Yeah, and. Uh, uh, well, token token. On slide 10, he says, uh, slashing can be implemented by starving a population of food, which makes sense. Yeah. The next part, conversely, we now have a means of rewarding validator behavior in addition to paying transaction fees. We can feed them enough that they can reproduce and do more work. Okay, this is treating a validator as a process. But, you know, I mean, isn't a validator associated with hardware? <laughs> no? So this P is validator's behavior, which I'll be right back. So in a, in, a, in a sense, validator is this P, but not not as a constant, right? Okay, so validator is evolving. So with, with each execution of user contract, validator is, is changed somehow. Yeah, this makes sense because I, I was thinking that uh, uh, staking can be something that uh, you uh, uh, accumulate, you know? If you are a good validator, you 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 have uh, 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 higher and higher stake. You know you you just collecting uh, rewards in a, in a sense. Mm -hmm. But but you have in, in in that sense you have greater responsibility and greater uh, uh, and, and greater risk. And you you have some much more much more a bigger stake to lose. Mm -hmm. So in, in, in that stake in that sense, I, I'm thinking this this is like a good way to you know. Have this? Uh, 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 how can validator evolve? And also the, the the other way around. If you if you start to do something which is not uh, uh, part of the consensus, you can be slashed. Mm -hmm. which means you cannot get more food or yeah but this is not only uh, to to reduce food you want to so slashing is some something something more than just because if, if you can if you if you can collect uh, some amount of, of food you can do bad things until you you uh, 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 until you metabolize all all the mm -hmm. food that you have already have yeah that makes sense whereas yeah on your first instance of doing something out of protocol you get you can get slashed 
Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, it's, it's not good enough if, if you're doing like good stuff and then, you know, kill someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. I say, you know, I, I did like, uh, a lot of good things. <laughs> Yeah, but he saved that, you know, school bus full of children from going off the cliff. So it's okay yeah. if he beats his wife. Ben <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> told me about uh, uh, AI and, uh, you know, when, when uh, AI must decide in, in the traffic, uh, 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 about uh, 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 he decide to go left or right. You know, on the on the right is like a bunch of people. On the left is only one people, one uh, man, one uh, uh, man. And yeah. uh, who will on, on which side will, will go? You know, and mm -hmm. he, he can decide to go to, on 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 the left side to to you know just kill on this this uh, one man. Yeah. But this this one man can go on the other side, start running to the other side. You know, and the AI, AI will conclude, I must kill this one. So he will go and <laughs> kill all the others. <laughs> Hi, Dor. Hi, Hi Dor. I'm, I'm really late and I really wanted to attend this one. So um, uh, thanks for recording. Oh, yeah. That's funny. So the the question of how do I do the least harm turns into how do I kill this <laughs> one guy? <laughs> so so we need a we need a better consensus than, than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you got, you're getting it. I thought I was getting it when he presented it, but trying to relate this to doing actual consensus on the blockchain is uh, uh, kind of uh, elusive to me. Uh, on slide 18. Slide 18. He talks about classification <laughs> of consensus-like behaviors. Uh, and he shows the hierarchy on the left there. So, um, where is that hierarchy in the code? Well, I think these That's classifications easy. are going to come about once we, you know, once we start uh, treating these things as. Uh, genetic information and if you go on down he talks about how the different ways that these things can can spawn children now how would that i, I kind of saw that that classification scheme coming out of that and you would classify uh somehow based on where the uh contribution from the parents came from but you know I, I don't I suppose these genetic classification systems are ultimately based on you know the the chromosomes from the from the different parents and what what are what is our analogy for chromosomes here can, can you slide on down to that last screen where he talked about the... Uh, no, he was uh, mentioning this here. Yeah, yeah, that was the before. The phenome and the genome. Yeah, we can have different combinations of, of this. Uh, we can use different, uh, different terms, not only pars, and we can make different combinations uh, to combine. We can implement crossover at the predicate level. Yeah, crossover. So what do you mean by crossover? A crossover means uh, that uh, you can uh, you can make uh, uh, all the combinations 
from uh, uh, all the combinations of I'm not sure how to say what is this uh, it looks like he's getting at uh, like a fee male and a fee female or something yeah but I'm not sure from where can you go back up to one one screen because I think he talks about I think in this slide he was using this fee. Yeah. Right. Oh, there's where he talks about three lisp as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here is the, the this recursion. Uh, S is a food, and this is like a recursion of the mm -hmm. of, of this expression creating names from your processes i'm not sure he, he, he was saying that uh, a fixed point for for this exists and i'm 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 wondering what what is the fixed point for from this for, for this equation yeah i don't know yeah and after that he he's using uh, he, here is using b and here is uh, he was referencing this as b I think that fixed point business would make more sense if we were looking at this from the 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 towers thing, the three list. Mm. Because I know they they talk about that that fixed point in in uh, in list a lot. Uh, I'm I'm not quite sure I understand it exactly how it how it works here. Yeah, I'm not sure. So the female and the male fees. And the, the, the fee is a user contract. So what, what this means to so that? Suppose fee is equal to this, this, uh, the name of the, the male and female in parallel. Fee prime is male and female prime in parallel, then we have... Oh, this means that uh, we have some internal structure to, to these user contracts that uh, validator is executing. Mm -hmm. And we can talk about this combination. Of... Yeah, well, he defines it Ooh. as a... Uh, behaviors in par. So, you can take some combination of the behaviors of each, I would assume. But, um, you know, I'm not clear what the rules are. <laughs> um, and what does it mean crossover at the predicate level? I'm not sure what, what does it mean. Well, to when he says at the predicate level, what I what I take that to mean is he means at the row calculus grammar level. Mm. Right? The thing on the left side, you know, and then the, the colon uh, you know, in our in our row calculus grammar, that's the way we th set things up. Predicate and then um What's the other side of that expression called in the in the grammar? Not the subject. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's what he's talking about with the predicate level. I see. I see. You know, we could do this. Uh, you know, at the language level, or we could do it at the at the definition of the language level. Now, I could be wrong about that, but I think that's where he's going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I see. And, and the nice thing about all these inventions he's come up with now is they solve these big problems that we've got. <coughs> But they, but like he says, they're native to Roland. They're native to the, the, the space-time calculus. Mm -hmm. 
which gives us a quite a coup when it comes to at least Casper. But I'm not sure if that's kind of fully true. Um, okay. I, I don't understand his solution, but it's just based on a paper of CRC encodings to get some synchronization. And that paper is just like general, right? So I'm, I, it might be really nice to implement it using Roland uh, uh, or the space-time extension. Um, but I, I'm not sure if it's kind of implies that the only way to solve it is with Roland. If that's what you implied, I'm not sure if that's what you were implying. Well, yeah, I, I was implying that we at least have the, you know, we at least have the high ground now because we're the only, we're, we're the only project that's proposed a solution to it, and and we and and our solution is, uh, you know, directly tied to the the definition of the language. But no, I, I agree that. You know, if, if if these things can be done, can be done at all, they don't have to be done in Rolang. But you know, Rolang is far more developed than any other approach that I know of. Mm -hmm. I would think the predicates refer to the sends and the receives. Yeah, I, 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 what I heard from like uh, uh, well, back from. <laughs> when Casanova came up and I was like around Vlad at the time. Uh, uh, they, they are working on solving kind of the, the liveness. Well, the liveness issue was well known for like the first CBC Casper paper mentioned it. And I think they reiterated in the second one and also famous uh, computer scientists already kind of mentioned it back in March and last year. Um, it's just the CBC approach, right? Just moves everything to the last minute because uh, that was the stepping stones for the consensus protocol, which they're working on it now. Um, I, I think they're just trying to find the best way to, to, to kind of solve the liveness issue so it doesn't kind of make uh, the, the whole solution too centralized. Um, um, I think I've, uh, I wish I could have un assessed uh, Greg's solution. I think he just found the you know like the path to explore. Uh, I I I don't I, I cannot assess like if that's actually solving it or it's just like uh, really important in the in the solution or not. Um, but it's definitely going to be a unique uh, idea that. Archon can elegantly implement if it is the, the, the core solution. I just, I don't know. Uh, I mean, if we can investigate as, as a group to kind of understand the space time implications on Casper, that would be cool. Oh, no. uh, there are, are, are you saying that uh, Vlad uh, uh, with the Casper, they, they, are, are they going to define something about Linux? Because uh, my understanding oh. is that. Uh, but the Casper is so general because if if you want to say something about, about Linux, you must you know go in, into direction to some uh, uh, specific implementation. So um, so the first Casper paper was uh, what was the name? Uh, abstract Casper, right? Uh, and then the second paper was the minimal Casper, which kind of the the abstract one just specified the safety proofs. And then the minimal one, I forgot what, what we, we covered it here. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I, I kind of forgot what, what it actually added. Uh, but it also kind of uh, uh, showed that, oh, you can define different protocols based on the minimal Casper. Um, but it's still not a consensus protocol because there's no liveness uh, or, any, or any other specifics about uh, incentives, slashings, and stuff. It just uh, hey, equivocation. That that's yeah. That's what Nemo Casper kind of provided, like the rules for equivocation and stuff. So uh, the next paper, 
will be basically the actually consensus protocol. Until now, Casper is not a consensus protocol. It's a family of protocols. So, and it's part of the CBC approach, uh, right? So every time you build, you kind of, you can assume everything you already proved, but you can add stuff. Uh, so the scope becomes smaller. Uh, so the next one will probably have liveness, which will have some uh, uh, synchrony assumption. Um, and the scope will be small, but that would be the actual consensus protocol. Right, and I think the difference here is that for synchrony, for synchrony, synchrony uh, uh, you have the emergent time it, uh, notion in the time space model. Yeah, so here, here's what's so cool about uh, Greg's uh, proposal. Because uh, the, the easiest thing you can always kind of say, oh, I need some kind of uh, synchronized between computers is like, hey, uh, let's use a clock. And now the clock, a clock is kind of simple to us when you think about it, but it's really, really actually a, a difficult problem. There's the whole uh, thing, uh, NTP protocol or something about uh, uh, the t uh, servers for clocks. And that's really complicated. Um, so even if you want to base on that, that's kind of going to make everything really complicated because every clock will have some skews. And you also kind of adding some external uh, thing to your consensus protocol. So that's kind of also probably less secure in a way. Um, um, so by having logical clocks in, and not like true time, if you can kind of create your own clock in the system, uh, you can make it much more elegant, much simple, uh, and probably uh, much uh, more secure as well. Um, uh, but when you, when yeah. you say create, create a clock, uh, it, uh, it, 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 uh, whatever way you, you, you choose to, to create a clock, this, this will be uh, some, something from, from outside. So for me, it's difficult to, to imagine how Casper can, can define liveness. Because uh, the time space model includes time and it doesn't take anything external. Um, so I think uh, uh, I just skimmed through the kind of the whole paper that kind of uh, 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 the encoding thing. So uh, I, I think the way he's like saying is like, hey, we can actually encode in the messages uh, a clock. And uh, I'm assuming that that was kind of what, what kind of started the whole idea. Uh, so basically, you probably have some overhead in the messages, but you're actually kind of encoding something that is a clock. So basically, we can, let's say we can probably curate the clock now, right? Uh, if I say one, everyone knows the time is one. And when you send a message, you say two, right? Uh, so we're kind of but, all synchronizing. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I, I'm talking more, more about uh, that uh, Casper is, uh, as you said, that, that, that Casper describes a family of consensus. So mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to say what is the message because you, you want uh, uh, to be uh, abstract. And mm -hmm. this is exactly what I see as, uh, as the problem because uh, uh, th this is where the, the, the reflection uh, came in and uh, what, what Jim was explaining. Uh, the time is emerging. And in Casper, uh, they don't have this ability because they don't have reflection. So they will need some kind of way of constraining messages which be uh, which will automatically you know go into one direction of uh, 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 some kind of uh, synchronous constraint which will again be uh, something uh, time uh, uh, something from from outside well, wait, so in, in that sense i'm thinking this is difficult to uh, the, the justifications give you relative time yeah the trick is putting that into a space so that you can, uh, uh, so that is uh, meaningful. And then you can constrain the space and uh, 
In other words, uh, time for you and time for me is different, obviously, because we're in different places. Uh, but uh, uh, we can concur on Earth time. Okay, we can make an agreement about Earth time. And that's putting it within some space-time sphere. So I think the, trick, the, the tricky part in Casper is that, um, okay, so still, we, we're talking about like not, the fi not a consensus protocol, right? It's all uh, kind of uh, uh, whoever going to define, it's a family of, as you said, it's a family of protocols. But whoever going to build on the minimal Casper is basically going to add uh, this, uh, uh, the synchrony assumptions. So um, the, the justification stuff, the problem is, is hey, how you as a node can know uh, that uh, to move on if suddenly all the other nodes go dead, right? You kind of need to, uh, in a way, the protocol needs to define, hey, we're exchanging messages. We, 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 we need to kind of know in a way uh, when is when to move on? When it's your time to kind of propose things? And um, this is kind of missing. And the reason this is important in Casper is because we have this whole finality issue that we need to know when things are finalized. In the, in in, the, in Bitcoin, you don't have that problem, right? Because you just like based on how many blocks you have, you can kind of assume something is safe. Well, it's not really safe. Um, so Casper is kind of sim that's why I like Casper. I think like you have this trade-off that you can kind of it's really similar to Bitcoin in a way, but you do have finality in the end, right? So you you can define what's final for you, but uh, as you can make it more risky and less risky, but still, um, if you have finality in your system, you kind of need to. Uh, know the rules of when to wait and when to w w w uh, and when to continue. And this so, is exactly how I can, uh, 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 like is uh, Isaac. Are you kind of uh, uh, have a better explanation? Uh, definitely not a better explanation. Um, that, you know your your discussion of finality and Casper. Um, I'm, I don't know how finality is affected by having validator rotations. Um, I, cause everything that I've seen for Casper was under the assumption of a fixed validator set. So with bonding on bonding and validator rotations, um, I, I don't know how that affects finality because if you have finality for one set of validators and then the validator set changes. I don't know if that changes the notion of finality or not. Uh, maybe, maybe you have an answer to that. I'm not really sure. So, um, may, may I also uh, ask a sub question for that? <laughs> this is very related to, 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 to Isaac's question. Uh, just to, just to extend, uh, this validator rotation is this means uh, unbounding uh, bounding or is it rotation? inside the consensus because you want to find majority agreeing on something so this majority is not the whole set of validators mm. so can you rotate this number this part of the validators so is this the, the rotation? So, so it's not you binding on binding it's uh, inside of the protocol in a, in a way that so not the same validators stay all the time mm. so let's say you have a thousand people uh, who bounded but at a time you the capacity at the moment is hundred so you want to kind of have uh, not the same validators uh, uh, accumulating all the uh, coins and also uh, the, the, the power can increase uh, based on how they play the game uh, so you want to kind of to make it in a non-deterministic that who validates out of the pool. So in a way there's thousand validators, but actively there's only hundred. Mm -hmm. The protocol itself need to kind of 
coming to consensus who who are the validators. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so uh, when, I, you, when you say uh, 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 sorry, when, when you say active validators, I'm not sure what what you mean. Uh, so who is actually validating, right? So if there's a hundred out of the thousand, right? Uh, but they, they, they all must record everything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So y you're recording, but your vote doesn't count. Mm. You're, only, you're only a full node, a read-only kind of. It's like temporary zero weight or something? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, or you don't even actually need to vote. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure how, how, what's the implementation. Okay. Uh, but I agree that kind of everyone kind of need to finalize those on who who are the next validators. Mm -hmm. So if people have different kind of finalization criteria, I just wonder how that would play. Um, I mean, um, yeah, that, that's kind of interesting in a way, I guess, but. I think Greg was in thought that uh, uh, because you're looking in a limited scope in space time, that you keep finality because you're not, you don't, you're ignoring all the noise that's outside the sphere. You're not fresh. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, we have so many questions. I think, like, okay, so. Greg is a pure researcher. I mean, all these slides, <laughs> the biology and stuff. Um, um, I, uh, I, I wish there was kind of more kind of uh, 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 R-chain research for dummies kind of uh, edition. <laughs> he's kind of raising more <laughs> questions than he's uh, providing answers yeah. to. <laughs> and but, and but I know it, why, because he, it's so obvious to him. And the thing is, I realize also, uh, even uh, uh, people who are much smarter than me and like in research also usually need to ask great questions because this is a lot of things that, uh, uh, this is like really specific kind of uh, uh, sector that you really need to specialize to kind of understand as well. And also, I, I think it, maths, just notations and stuff, in a way that uh, sometimes whoever writes stuff uh, is the one who has to explain. Um, but um, um, I think that's, I, I think this is kind of, okay, so like everything in research, like the, the theory and, and the practice, there's, there's a lot of kind of steps between them. And we saw it with Archon, right? If you remember the first uh, uh, architecture papers and what we have today, it's day and night in a way. Like the, the, the ideas are there, but it's kind of completely not <laughs> implementation-wise. Um, so in a way that Greg is obviously, he has so much knowledge that he can kind of, faster than anyone else, can kind of like scan through all the ideas and kind of, guide to the right ones um, but uh, for me I need to kind of have more like kind of the dumbed down version of like in real in real world how how this is implemented Im implemented or how does it affect the implementation um, so I think that's the gap I need to kind of uh, uh, fill before I understand what 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 this means I mean, it took me a lot with just Roland, if you think about it. Uh, it took much less to, for Kyle, uh, Mike, and uh, Nash, and Mike, because they're like, uh, have a math background and uh, been like top level engineers for so long. Um, so uh, <laughs> this, this is probably gonna take time. And, and, and kind of, that's why I asked Greg to have blog posts. <laughs> Because even the podcasts are uh, are hard to learn from. Like I, I read it, I appreciate the knowledge and everything, but when it's a blog post, when I he read Vitalik stuff, uh, I can go and research further. Uh, and also because you write it, 
right? It's, it's more, much more effort. So you end up kind of explaining because you, while you write it, you understand it's kind of, there's gaps that you need to fill. Um, but it's much more time consuming as well. Um, so I, I, I kind of hope that uh, maybe if we dig deeper into these kind of subjects, we can kind of create a more uh, e easier to, to learn uh, uh, kind of document in the process. Yeah, and, and Greg, uh, Greg has a much bigger background. So uh, yeah. when he, when he, when he <laughs> brings something new, it's, it's much, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the scope is much, much bigger. And uh, mm -hmm. so. I mean, this whole space-time thing, if, if you guys follow the Casper talks, he mentioned it, what, around November or October, after just the whole Casper Labs shenanigans, right? Uh, well, uh, I, I, I'll just add that back in his pie calculus paper, uh, or uh, back in the uh, pie calculus series, he first introduced this. Tomislav uh, found, found some of those uh, quotes from the from the pie calculus yeah. series that he did, mm -hmm. which is a yeah. very, very good series, but it, it, it's deeper than what he's doing now. Um, yeah, yeah. But, but I can yeah. go back to it and get quite a bit out of it now that, that, you know, like you say, we've all come to have a better understanding of rolling. And so we have a, a, con a foundation and a context now to understand those things he was talking about before. One thing that, that mm. has been puzzling me is his uh, journey into this space-time calculus has talked about, he keeps talking about the, uh, let me see, how does he say this? The context is the derivative of the type. Okay. And, and so, I mean, that, that makes sense. The statement makes sense. But what is he talking about the type of the contract? Uh, the, the terms of the of, of rolling are they, they have types, right? The, the, the grammar. Uh, so each each term you can see as a, uh, as his the derivative. What 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 uh, what uh, what rep uh, representation, and uh, and in in his lecture about uh, computation calculus, he was explaining how to how can you get a, a derivative from from a type. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's by looking at that domain equation. I know there's a connection to that as well. Yeah, and he in introduced that as far as I know back in that pi calculus talk. Right. Yeah. And then this is also, uh, uh, but yeah, this this is this is this discovered by this guy Corner McPratt. He was talking about uh, the one hole context. So, George, if if you want to find something more about that, you uh, you can search mm -hmm. this uh, one hole context context from from Corner McBride. Okay. Corner uh, McBride. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. So in November, I mean, like he probably he found out. So he's like, oh, I found something in the Casper talks uh, when Vlad was uh, attending. Uh, I'm gonna share it with you, but I need more time. So I think that's when he found out about the whole error coding papers. Mm. Uh, and then I'm assuming the space time, which he was well known to him, kind of uh, fitted implementing the error coding better. I'm not sure. I mean, I'm assuming, but. Um, he clearly kind of, uh, yeah, what kind of figured a how we can solve the liveness issue because it was the hot topic, uh, although it was well known. Um, and then it just has the background of all this uh, uh, pi calculi uh, extension. So he kind of, uh, uh, yeah, just. Found found uh, the path. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I'm I'm kind of I just I just found today a, a great uh, I think it's from Oxford intro for PyCalc. I mean I thought I understood, but then I managed to learn a bit more. 
just by skimming through it, I, I need to have a better, uh, a better. Uh, I, I'll have a better understanding. Yeah. What are you talking about? Uh, is that Robin? Uh, there, are, there are one more, one more uh, video that I can recommend is Christian Williams' uh, introduction to the pi calculus. If you haven't seen that, I, I found that to be the the best treatment of the pi calculus for me so far. Yeah, this is excellent talk. Uh, I think is that is that in the university something you guys posted recently? Uh, yeah. Let me see if I can find the link to. That. Yeah. I think I saw it. It was really good. Yeah. I think maybe this paper, just like this document, was e easier to read because uh, now I have better background mm -hmm. because we've been talking about these things for so long. So when they talk about hey, defining new names uh, and uh, process composition and stuff, it just makes more sense. While back in the day when I was reading it, I'm like. I have no idea what I'm reading. <laughs> yeah. And now, now it's really great uh, uh, that you can, you know, take some code and uh, execute in in, in row you know? <laughs> This is like the, the yeah. Best. You, know, you can test it and try it. I think uh, uh, we probably. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think how to make it more approachable. Um, Josh's Roland, by example, was like really good because it gave good uh, analogies to mm -hmm. things that you're familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, I think a way to kind of uh, uh, talking about the concept in an easier form might, might kind of, because uh, like people talking about bound names and stuff like that. And it's hard for someone who been doing Java or something, he comes here and just doesn't understand why, what those things mean when people are talking and discussing it. So, um, I don't know, maybe kind of just like having kind of good analogies of uh, stuff uh, uh, will kind of make it easier to, to consume. Yeah, but also some, some stuff don't have any analogy. Because <laughs> when, when you're coming from Java, you, you, you don't uh, think about reflection, usually, except if you're, uh, if you're, if you're a little crazy. But, uh, no, but what about the analogy from the real world? Like, that's one of the good things that uh, 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 Joshi did, right? It's like mm. uh, the, the mailboxes and uh, pizza delivery and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of uh, specific to the tutorial, but maybe we can just have like kind of uh, easier names to kind of uh, explain processes and common events. I I'm trying to think about. I just uh, oh, I'm, 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 didn't really I'm, I'm think it through. I'm just sharing something. I, I, I'm, 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 I'm thinking more in, in direction how to interest uh, some someone to to rolling. Not not uh, you know if someone want to try yeah. something. So that's, because that's no, if, 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 if you want to uh, engage someone, uh, someone interest, uh, you must show in something really different mm -hmm. and not so uh, uh, like a simple example, right? So there's, this quote, learn, so there's this quote, which I'm kind of trying to find about design that you cannot make something that is a new design of something and make it like completely new something I, there's a famous quote of a famous designer or something that you need to kind of have some kind of uh, uh, make it uh, somehow uh, recognizable uh, uh, but uh, I need to find it it was just uh, but um, uh, think Roland just re being really different it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's something that uh, as a community we can probably help with to, to make it more approachable. I mean, your extensions to VS Code, I mean, CryptoFX is great, but the fact that, hey, you can use VS Code to also try out Rolang and it helps you with the out statement, that's like a huge kind of easy way for someone to start. 
uh, and uh, just these small examples, which uh, I don't know, maybe people didn't think they were important. I think that's like kind of that that could really help with the learning curve for someone new. Yeah, <laughs> this this also helps me. You know, <laughs> I, I I build X extension uh, mainly for me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because you know, you, if you write some code and then you execute it in, in, in terminal, and then, mm -hmm. then, then you, you must decipher on, on which line here is the error. And mm -hmm. you know, I, I wasn't write any, write any rolling before. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the next stage is probably, I think Joshi was kind of exploring a lot of like uh, the. Uh, 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 like code design structures of like factories and stuff. Um, mm. uh, so I mean, if we can, we talked about Java developers. I know when you learn Scala and stuff, you kind of uh, or functional programming, they kind of try to make you unlearn a lot of things. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you kind of know how to do something in Java, and then kind of do the same in Scala uh, or in Haskell. Um, I think it's still hard to kind of translate to real life um, because you, has, you, you clearly have all these race conditions that could pop up. Uh, and you know, without the type systems and stuff, it's probably uh, harder yeah. as well. So I, I've been thinking about that kind of aspect. Because uh, if anyone wants to build real, the, the, uh, real software, um, uh, I mean, they kind of need to have some kind of uh, reach to all their, their developer history to kind of use something they already know when they're exploring Roland. It's clearly not the syntax. <laughs> uh, yeah. But um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Just like thoughts I had today. I'm just sharing. Mm. Sorry. There is, a, there, there is also like a danger. Uh, you know the, the, how JavaScript was created to to be familiar with uh, <laughs> with Java developers, and we know how they, how this yeah. is. <laughs> so so it, the familiarity needs to be through a tutorial, in a way to kind of hey, uh, uh, um, after you know kind of the syntax and stuff, but like hey, um, uh, how do you kind of solve uh, um, kind of some uh, recursive algorithms or like some really famous algorithms that everyone kind of knows in functional programming and everyone knows how to do it uh, uh, in imperative programming. But this whole concurrency thing, that's kind of a different level because you can easily get to a point that you don't realize, but your code has bugs. Mm -hmm. um, and it's because of the concurrency nature. But um, what, what do you think is motivation for developers to, to learn uh, another language or rolling on any, any other? So, yeah, exactly. That, that's, that's one of the points that need to be addressed in a way to that, in what situations rolling is better. Mm -hmm. but, um, but I don't agree that this is something that you can present to someone. Uh, in, in a convincing way. I think that the better way is to just say, you know, uh, uh, my program that I built uh, ran on thousand processors without any problems, and uh, your program mm -hmm. runs, runs very slow. Mm -hmm. So you, you just... If, 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 we fight, if, <laughs> if, if we're going that path, we're going to lose. Here's the thing. <laughs> you kind of need to... Uh, because... Uh, but, but, but what do you think will lose? Who, who will lose? Uh, yeah, I will definitely lose. Because look, WebAssembly has like uh, uh, hundreds of billions of companies. Uh, like uh, all the big companies are actively developing on it. Uh, Google recently even like killed another project that was kind of competing, although they're working on both. Um, um, but take, take example, idea, for, for example, the, uh, Erlang. The idea of Rolang has to be not only performance, but also security. Uh, exactly. Like the yeah. combo of both needs to be probably an order of magnitude better than the competition for someone to make the effort 
of learning something that is not similar to anything else, right? To, to, to go through the learning curve. Also, keeping in mind all the other projects are pretty much all, it's becoming the standard that WebAssembly is going to be used on blockchain projects. Like most of the projects are choosing that, right? But, but this so is not important. As the developer you know, we're, we're doing one, no, but well, it but is you important know, because you know, not the, only you have... I mean, the technology is not important. The technology, you, you, we will use whatever comes next, you know, WebAssembly or some other processor or anything else. We, Sorry, what? Know, uh, we, we will choose whatever uh, the, the next technology will be, you know. No, uh, here's some, some the kind thing. Of more advanced processor or what, whatever else. The, I okay. think WebAssembly is just a fix for our uh, misunderstanding of, of uh, programming and computation. This is why we have WebAssembly, because we have, you know, JavaScript, which is uh, uh, like a child's play uh, programming. And, and this is why we, all, we have all these uh, things. And we, we, we see it as a solution, but they are not solution. They are just, you know, garbage from, 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 from the past. No, but, okay, so WebAssembly is quite new, right? Really new. <laughs> uh, but here's the thing. But but it's based on a really old idea, so so it's not new. It's it's, it's just a Lamb something Lamb that, is that is old. Yeah. It's it's, it's it's a sequential machine which is uh, very very well optimized to, to our processor. But this doesn't gives any you know anything new, anything special. It, it just solves our our eminent problem that we have now. But it it is it, also this is not the solution. This is just a fix. So um, here's the thing. You can have kind of, uh, I think maybe Casper Labs are doing that. Uh, yeah, they're using kind of our space time. Like you can have kind of this hash table of kind of doing concurrency, not in the language, but in other areas in the project. Here's the thing. I, I, I was kind of trying to evaluate what, what's the trade-offs? Everything in, in computer science has trade-offs. That's what, one of the things I learned. Um, and here you have uh, uh, developer tools, um, uh, a language that, uh, all the, a bunch of languages that can compile to that execu execution engine, um, wide support, and you build once and you probably can deploy you're not constricted to one platform, right? So in exchange, when you have something else which is new, which is not easier to learn, you need to have enough trade-off, right? For, for, to convince people to, hey, to, this new shiny thing, it's not- But, it's, but you're, it's, you're it's, saying- yes, uh, what, what, what does that mean? Uh, so here's the thing. So the, the type, like when you read, uh, I read about PyCalculus, like the type system that you can kind of derive out of it is, it's really kind of something that uh, it uh, uh, could benefit uh, the user. So I think like uh, security and performance together, that's kind of needs to be the value. But it cannot be only like twice better, I think. It might have to be like, an order of magnitude to make people to do the jump, right? Yeah. Um, uh, there were plenty of really good languages in the past. Uh, and then we kind of, people ended up using not the best ones, right? Uh, uh, I yeah. think Haskell would have been much more popular. Although it's popular, it would have been much more popular than what it is today if it was just based on uh, what's better. Uh, I have to run because it's 4.30. Uh, I'll catch you with you guys again. Uh, I'm happy to talk about these things all the time. Anytime. Okay. See you. See you. See you. Bye bye. Uh, do we have some time that I sh uh, show you uh, my recent work on uh, experimental stuff on, on rolling? <laughs> yeah, sure. So...
Well, I, I don't think that uh, we should uh, uh, we should need to um, uh, convince every developer uh, that that the rolling is better. You know. <laughs> Then there'd be too many cooks in the kitchen anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because in, 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 in this stage, uh, uh, this is very difficult. Because we, we don't have everything and uh, I, I don't think this is the, the good, good uh, uh, way of sp spending time. Yeah, well, at this stage, not only would it be difficult, but uh, it would be a lie, right? I mean, it's it's yeah. not better yet, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you must imagine what is possible, and then you can... Yeah, and, and honestly, I think it'd be a detriment to the problem to try and get a bunch of developers developing in Rolang now because they would see that it's not fully formed and then be like, oh, never mind, you know, I'm forget about this language, this will never yeah. be done, you know. And this is exactly what happened with Haskell. I, I remember a talk mm -hmm. by uh, Sam Peyton Jones and he was explaining uh, they had a new new language in Haskell, you know, the, the great language and, <clears throat> you know, based on lambda calculus and everything else. You know? mm -hmm. And, uh, but, uh, you know, <clears throat> in, in this stage, uh, uh, they didn't have a monad, so they didn't have a side effects. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, you have a language which uh, uh, you can program to do nothing. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's it. It's exactly nothing. It's just abstract abstraction of lambda expressions and you can do nothing. But, you know, <laughs> this is how you start. <laughs> well, right, right. Exactly. We're, we're just, uh, we're, we're at that point currently. <laughs> yeah. And this is why uh, I have these examples for, you know, running uh, side effects. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay. Uh, so, uh, this is version uh, uh, 093, which is a little slower to, mm -hmm. to start up. I'm not completely, oh, I, I didn't okay. measure, but... So, I'm, I'm waiting to start up. Uh, uh, so, I have, I have this special name. A side effect, uh, which uh, means that uh, you can start any any local pro local process. So in in, in this sense, uh, I'm saying okay, uh, I'm using run run process, and uh, I'm uh, uh, using uh, uh, cat for for displaying this uh, file. So I'm I want to display uh, uh, this file uh, as, as itself. Uh, why? Is it's not starting. Uh, sorry. Maybe I have another instance, which is next problems. Uh, I'm, I'm also testing this uh, on uh, with, with the deploys on blockchain, but uh, this doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I, so yeah, I, I will run to, uh, I will run two commands. Uh, one to display this uh, uh, this file, which is this file, and uh, the other is uh, just to call uh, the version of our mode. And I'm displaying both of these things uh, with uh, this continuation. And yeah, the result is uh, uh, either uh, true with a, with a, a true value or, or false if, if it is some kind of exception. Okay. So yeah, and also I have another example, but I want to first show this one. The the, the first parameter is uh, like a command, uh, because I have another another command. Which uh, which can translate uh, uh, a rolling code, parse a rolling code, and directly uh, in, uh, include it in, in, in inside the rolling. I'm not sure what's happening now. I will include the whole output.
should prepare everything. Sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. For, for this purpose, it would be nice to have some kind of uh, light version of uh, of ROVM. Oh, you know, yeah. without, without blockchain and everything else, you know, just you know, run my code. Uh huh. Yeah, like, do you really need Casper to start up to just uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. for some syntax? <laughs> So let me let me ask you some something about how this code is written out. So you have you're sending on this channel proc uh, three things, right? One of them being this acknowledgement channel. Yes. Okay. And so so you have this you know three tuple that you're sending on uh, this yes, channel I mean. proc. And yeah. then and you're, you're listening only on this acknowledgement channel, right? Yeah, this is like a return value. This is like a, like a function. Like a function, okay. So this result is going to be, uh, it's gonna be, so, so how do, what, what types of things do we get for uh, the result? Because uh, so so for me it's hard because I don't see explicitly uh, send on act channel you know this stuff and then I would know exactly what to expect. Uh, this is like a special name. Okay. That I created. Okay. It doesn't exist in in, in current version of Roland, right? Okay. So so what is this? What does this special name do exactly? Uh, it will it will uh, uh, spawn a new process uh, on, the, on the local machine. Okay. 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 You said that. Okay. And and so in within that local process, it has some send on the acknowledgement channel, and that's what you're listening for. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. That makes sense. Uh, exactly. This is the code. Uh, <clears throat> I'm using uh, I'm using standard the Scala uh, Scala uh, sys process library to to spawn a new a new uh, process and get the result. And okay. the result is yeah, the result is uh, a string. Mm, okay. You have to, you have a few options, but yeah, you you, you get or, or, or some kind of a, um, a stream or or just you know string as a, as the whole result. Okay. Cool. And and this is exactly the extension that I made. Yeah. Nice. This is very slow. Is it still loading up? Oh, oh yeah. It's, there uh, we go. Uh, finally. <laughs> maybe maybe uh, the Zoom share is. Keeping my processor at work. So yeah. I will disable the output and okay, now I can run it. So what, what we are expecting is uh, two two results, right? One from, from this uh, uh, from this file. Yeah. And the one processor uh, uh, is uh, 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 node version. So this is the, the node version. Yeah. And this is the whole file. So uh, two commands uh, are, are executed. Hmm. Uh, th this is what uh, uh, my code is uh, uh, printing out. Okay. Uh, this list is uh, really this list. This is what, what is printed. Hmm. So the first result, you see this is a string. And this is the whole file, this one. And, and this this whole file you know contains already I, I tasted the results so you know you see duplicated everything. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, <laughs> it's, this is like a like a <laughs> three stages of a quine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on purpose. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, so the, here is the here is the result of the of the version. Yeah. So this is like a little confusing. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to I wanted to express this you know recursive recursive, uh, recursive way of. Doing so it. what what is your aim in in writing this stuff? So my aim is uh, like in this uh, in this next example, uh, I'm uh, I'm using this uh, HTTP uh, raw file, which is this file. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I presented this uh, HTTP. This is also special name to to make HTTP request. But uh, oh. in, in this example, this doesn't matter. This is like an existing rolling code, okay. which uh, which works. You know, which works. I can execute it and I can see the result.
this is the the, the HTTP request uh, uh, made directly from Rome oh. because of this question. But now I want to uh, get this file uh, and read this file, like evaluate this file directly in Rome. So uh, I'm using this uh, uh, different command, which is run row, which means uh, convert this string uh, uh, in, uh, in, a, in a row in a, in a row link directly, so I can just exit it. And you can see that uh, after I receive this result, I just drop it here. I will, I will execute the result directly. So I'm reading the file and just dropping it in, inside the row. So I will, I will execute this file. So let's do this. And I should get the same result because I'm executing exactly the same file. And here it is. It's parsed and it's executed uh, inside the That's pretty cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, with, with this, uh, uh, you know, you, you can you can do uh, uh, lots of different things. For, for mm -hmm. example, I can uh, I can execute a, a node a node a node JS uh, process, right? For example, okay. in, in, in this file, uh, and I, I'm receiving uh, I, I'm receiving JSON, and JSON, uh, as Greg said, uh, is uh, encoded. Uh, it can be directly encoded in Roland, so I can I can use the Roland parser to to uh, to uh, parse it, and I can I can use it inside my code. So <clears throat> uh, here is my file. This is like a JSON, uh, Node.js uh, uh, Node.js file which uh, re returns JSON uh, result, it, which means uh, it, it will return uh, this JSON uh, object. So, in my rolling file, uh, I will execute uh, uh, this uh, Node.js uh, program, and I will uh, I send to, to this program this array. Mm -hmm. And I will receive a result on uh, a Cloudlip channel. And what I'm doing here, I'm directly uh, matching on, on, on this uh, JSON object. So now I, now I have a map inside the road. So, so JSON is converted to, to, to a map and I, I can uh, match on the, on the result directly. You know, this is a, a roller code. So I have a way to directly call Node.js and get uh, uh, data from, from Node.js. Hmm. And uh, in, the, in this other example, it's just an object JSON. This is like a static file which uh, returns JSON. Okay. So when I execute that, this I will get uh, this echo message from the first execution, and uh, this JSON from the second. This echo message is extracted from from you know from the from the return object uh, from JSON, and displayed here. So I'm say, I'm sending this array to to Node.js. I'm parsing it putting it in, in uh, echo field, and then uh, 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 stingify it to just JSON. And, uh, 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 and after, this, uh, after this is loaded in rolling, it will be uh, parsed by rolling, and uh, 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 it, will, it will be a, a rolling map that I can match here, and I'm extracting the echo field, yeah. uh, which is this array that I sent here, and I'm extracting only the first part, which is uh, this name, uh, this uh, uh, string sample array. And this is what, what is displayed here. That's cool, man. <laughs> so wait, you said that JSON uh, files can be represented in Rolang and like natively just as maps? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. I guess the syntax is basically it's exactly the same. Exactly the same. Yeah. 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 No kidding. Huh. So we, now we don't have like a floating point and uh, this kind of stuff. So you, I mean, that's you know, you, yeah. you cannot. Yeah. 
but yeah, if, if we have all the base types, we can just you know pass the rolling and. Yeah, wow, that's cool. See ya. And and uh, I can <laughs> I can deploy this on on regular uh, regular uh, uh, R nodes, which doesn't uh, recognize this special name, and it, it, you know it it it, it, it will uh, it will uh, uh, accept this file, which is not correct, but it will fail to any other propose. So I'm, I'm now, now I'm checking if this is like a real bug or or, 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 or I did something wrong. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So do they do they have plans to make this special name to to run local processes? Well, I'm not I'm not sure. Okay. There is also there is also a problem with uh, security. Uh, okay. But I, I have different uh, uh, different thing in mind. Mm. Uh, Maybe you want to have a way. Maybe you don't want to have this on a blockchain, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe you want to have like a special or like a way of extending the existing LVM for your purpose. Mm -hmm. you, have, you have the the core, and then you you just uh, implement your your own special name uh, that uh, that you can just that you can exclude from 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 the blockchain, for example. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can you can easily uh, uh, integrate your application with uh, with a rollback. Mm -hmm. You know you, you don't have to go to gRPC and uh, uh, constantly uh, uh, checking uh, some name or or, or 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 in some way get some private name and you know in in, in this way you can just you know uh, say I I will start some process uh, on my machine and I will you know communicate it by my with my node. Mm -hmm. When, when something's happened, I want to be uh, notified. Hmm. But I, I don't have the, 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 full, the full picture of how to, how to do it. But mm -hmm. yeah, this, this mm -hmm. goes in, in this direction. Yeah, that's really cool. Because I'm, I'm thinking that maybe we don't need uh, this special name in integrated inside the, the core R node, the row hmm. Maybe we can just you know, say, OK, this is like an extension. and. You know, you can you can attach something to 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 your private name, which will be only visible in your uh, node. Yeah. You know, so when I said it, this will be unforgeable, but on my node, I will uh, have a meaning to this. Right. Right. So in, in that sense, I think uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's useful. Yeah. Interesting. Because uh, maybe we don't want to. Uh, uh, be so dependent on development on uh, on the core uh, R node. Yeah. Because you know it's it's difficult to to put new versions and everything else, which mm -hmm. you, know, you want to you don't want to do it uh, often. Mm -hmm. Uh. So is there a particular reason that you're choosing to, to send this stuff to Node.js? Uh, no, 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 there is no. You just kind of proof of concept. Uh, yeah, this is proof of concept. And it's easy to get uh, JSON. In it. Yeah. OK, OK. Yeah, Th this is why I'm, I'm using here the cat for just you know, uh, reading the J uh, JSON, reading the file yeah. as, as a string. So yeah, and then and, and, and this example, I'm, uh, I'm also uh, just, just uh, uh, running any command, like uh, I'm not version. Yeah, right. Cool, man. That's all for me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, that's pretty. That's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, I. Uh, so I've been. So well, so I worked on implementing joins in K framework. Uh, I think I more or less finished that stuff about a month ago. And then I went back to the original where I've, you know, the original definition, I, I did that all in a separate module uh, that used the syntax from the original module that I was working in. And changed a bunch of things and now I have, you know, process variables and name variables. Um, 
But then when I went back to my implementation of joins, everything was totally broken and it wouldn't work anymore. Uh, so uh, I, I feel a little bit silly saying this, but I just realized how nice GitHub is and realized that on GitHub, not only do you have a copy, so every commit that you put in, not only do you have that copy, but you have a snapshot of your entire project at the time of that commit. Uh, so that was really nice to just be able to go back to the definition that I was using at that time of the last commit and then just copy paste and now just use this syntax. So everything is working again. So that's really nice. Cool, cool. Um, and I don't know if it's fully done, uh, but something I was just working on this morning was integrating. So I had been working on, so the, the structural types, which are basically just the abstract syntax trees, and then trying to figure out a way to do the pattern matching through those structural types, um, basically by just defining a, a predicate that operates on, on those types and just using several rules that say like these types are included in these types and so on and so forth. Um, so I think I have at least the preliminaries of uh, an actual like pattern matcher, which is you know something that I was hoping to have way long before now. But uh, you know, it's like things just take the time that they do, I guess. Right. Um, yeah, and so I was I was having these weird interactions with I, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure what was causing it. I think it was something to do with the semantic modules and the definitions not being able to see one another and then strictness attributes on your functions and like evaluating arguments doesn't quite work the way I want it to if if I can't see the the semantic modules in in both definitions that I was using um but I can I can show you what I was working on a little bit oh, yeah. let, me, let me find the files first and also your, your question for Greg uh, related to uh, to the history of uh, execution. If you remember on Discord, uh, yeah, you were you were asking if this action is a, a reduction. Yeah, uh, right, right. Is he talking about a send or a reduction? Yeah, yeah. Because if yeah. you have reduction, you, you you lose something. You you forget something. So. Yeah, right. But he said something along the lines of uh, so. I, what I was getting at is I don't see what the value add of the continuation saturated normal form is for a process because it just turned a regular um, input prefix, you know, a, rec a receive process, a single receive, and it turned it into uh, basically a send in par with uh, a joined receive. Um, and I didn't see what that actually, what we gained in doing that because if, and he said, because now you can record actions before you take them or something along those lines. Um, but I'm not sure I understand what actions he's talking about because if you can record sends before you process the com event, well then why did we need the continuation saturated stuff to begin with? Um, and if it's comms, then I don't see how that got us anything. So I guess really in either situation, I don't see how it helps. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't think he, uh, responded to the second question. So yeah, yeah, he didn't. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. I'll share what I got here. Uh, forget. Yeah. So this is, um, so, oh man, I don't know where exactly I want to start explaining all of this stuff because uh, just for example, the join, uh, just the implementation of joins took me 1500 lines of code, I think, to, to finally get it to work the way I wanted. And that was before I had the syntax in here. So I think it's now more at like 17, it's at almost 1900 lines of code. Um, and the, the issue is that I have a lot of repetition 
in my code. Um, so this is this is just all syntax stuff. Uh, I've shown that stuff a many many times, mm. uh, but maybe I can just try to explain what's going on in the configuration because this configuration is much larger now than it was before. Um, mm. And so essentially, uh, we still have some of the same features going on here. Like there's you know this this threads portion to the configuration, which is just every time it sees a par, it spawns a new thread, and that's kind of like an independent um, cell for computation to happen in. And uh, there's still a tuple space, but these uh, send and receive cells now have been expanded a lot. And so the, the major changes are, um, so now every, Every process gets an identifier, gets like a, a fresh integer that's associated with it. And uh, so it's, a, it's, I'm not 100% sure what the implications are in terms of pars being commutative. You know, I'm still taking pars and deconstructing them and putting them into a multiset, but now the elements in the multiset now are labeled with, you know, this was like the first process that I saw and this was the second one. Uh, so in some sense, it really is just a set now because I'm, you know, ordering everything oh. in, in some regard. Uh, and that's not what I wanted to do. And like I said, it's been a month since I've really worked a lot on this, but there was a very good reason that I had to do it and I'm trying to remember what it is and maybe I'll, I'll remember it as I'm explaining okay. this stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, so with the, okay, so certainly with the sends and the receives, uh, these both needed identifiers because the way that, uh, so the way that the matching is happening in the configuration is such that if I have a send, uh, let's say I have a send and it sends two things. Uh, so what I want to do now is search the tuple space essentially for all of the receives that can possibly uh, receive two things, right? So I need to search for all of the listens in some, res in some respect uh, that are listening on the appropriate channel and listening for the appropriate amount of messages, basically. Uh, so I needed to have this uh, send ID so that when one of these receives matches with the information that I'm sending, I can record it in some respect. And so the way that I'm recording it is I basically have, for each one of these listens uh, and so by listen I mean if I have a receive that is like a join of three different things like listen on channel X for whatever listen on channel Y for whatever and listen on channel Z for whatever uh, basically the receive cell that corresponds to that receive will have three listen cells kind of within it and each one corresponding to like X is listening for, you know, these variables or whatever, and Y is listening for these and Z is listening for these. So each one of those listens will get its own cell, which records the, the channel, uh, the, the names or variables that it's listening for, how many of them there are. Uh, it also gets an ID because I need to keep track of consumable versus non-consumable and whether matching has happened or not already. Um, so, so it's a little bit complicated because basically for, for each one of the sends, I have this uh, set that I'm associating with it. And this set is basically gathering all of the possible listens that it could match with. And the, the reason that I can't immediately go to do something with it is because uh, if that listen is, you know, in a joined receive, well, then it doesn't immediately get consumed because how do I know that I have the other sends that are required to actually, you know, make that reduction happen? Sorry, you said uh, before 
that you solve this situation with uh, with another uh, with something that you you uh, collect uh, all the uh, if you have a bind you have special cell that you can put uh, your your names that you are searching like yeah. a uh, uh, like a re reserve you are reserving these uh, these names so that uh, other process cannot uh, uh, yeah so use. so there's a there's a few things going on so each one of the sends basically has a record of all of the um you know identifiers all of the id numbers for the listens that it could potentially match with so has the right number of things listening and is listening on the right channel basically um but i don't know a priori if there's a, a comma event yet because uh it, you know i need to know if it's in a join if all of the other mm -hmm. listens are also going to have a, a send to, to, to reduce with basically. Uh, so I just record, uh, along with each one of these sends, the set of all potential listens that could match with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm doing a similar thing with the receives, uh, except with the receives, I'm basically keeping a track. Uh, so, so they also have this set, which I called the, the NOMO set because I don't want it to match anymore with the things in this set. And basically what it's doing is, so a receive is uh, a bunch of listens potentially. Uh, so each one of these listens is going to find a single send to, to try and match with. And, uh, once one of the listens matches with a particular send, I don't want any of the other listens in that receive to match with the same send. So that's kind of like where I'm keeping all of these ID numbers for the sends so that I don't have, you know, uh, a situation where I have the same exact send matching multiple listens at the same time. I see. So you, you changed your previous uh, implementation, right? You don't have this special set. This, this is the way how, how now it's. Uh, so, so this, so I haven't been able to integrate everything into one definition yet. So in this, this was just like, I'm changing the configuration and everything that I need to just to accommodate for joins. And now it also does all of the, the um, previous, uh, semantics as well, uh, but it doesn't have any of the the updated syntax that I've been working with. So uh, unfortunately, there's still some incongruencies between uh, the two definitions that I'm working with. But th oh, this is just the state that mm -hmm. it's at, unfortunately. I see. I see. Yeah. Cool. And so um, the other thing that I need to keep track of is uh, so I'm calling it state here. Uh, but basically it's, so it's, it's some component of the receive and what it's going to do is essentially tell me if this particular receive is looking for sends to match with the listens that it has, or if it has matched all of its listens and now it's ready to, to go into a reduction and, and, you know, have a comma event occur. Uh, that, that's basically what's, what's happening with that. So, um, Other than that, I think most of the other things are the same. Oh, yeah. I was thinking about the reaction. Yeah, yeah. This yeah, is and, and the reaction cell now has even been expanded uh, to contain some, some other information. So the reaction cell before only had uh, these first three cells, which were basically uh, what's the continuation, uh, what are the names that I'm substituting for and what are the, you know, processes or names that I'm going to substitute in for that first collection of names, right? So, and, and the reason that I had this reaction cell was just so, um, was so if I had, for example, multiple names that I had to, uh, to substitute, uh, and in general, it's an arbitrary number of names, right? So there's no way that I can just say like, okay, I'm going to make it for 10 and that's enough, right? Because then what happens when I have 11 variables that I'm listening on? Uh, so, so this was a way to just 
jam any like, list of any length into one place and then have that substitution kind of happen element wise. Um, but so I, now, I, I had I had like a wrong understanding then because I, I was thinking that you are using reaction when you have a join, so you can you can put something in in this reaction itself yeah. and. Uh, prevent uh, any other uh, comment but yeah so so the issue that i am having is i don't know if i don't know how to and i don't know even if there is a way to substitute a list for a list you know um like say i have a list of 10 items mm -hmm. and i want to substitute the first one for the first one, the second one for the second one, or you know, two lists, like one I'm listening for and one I'm receiving. Uh, I don't know how to just take the first one and substitute it for the first one, take the second one for the second one, third one for the third one, et cetera. Uh, other than just taking them both and then doing that element-wise substitution. I don't know if there's even uh, like a, a language production for just substituting all of them at the same time. I, there is in terms of maps, uh, and maybe I could do it there, but I'm, I haven't really uh, tried that. Um, Cause yeah, the only, the only two forms of substitution uh, that exist in K that I'm aware of that I've seen are element for element, which could be a list for a list, but I'm not even sure how it would handle something like that. Uh, or you can, you can just tell it a map and then it will substitute all of the values for, for keys, you know, as, as mm -hmm. those pairs. Um, I see. Okay. Yeah. And so, uh, so, uh, what, what the reaction cell now has that that's different. Well, it's like all of these four cells under it. And um, basically what we're going to do now is also keep track of the uh, identifying number for the receive that is associated with this comm event. And the reason I chose the receive is because it's always one receive that's being, you know, consumed or used in a comm event, but it could be many sends that are being used, right? Because receives can listen on many different channels if you've joined the listens together. Oh. Uh, so, so that for me was, was like the, the one thing that I could grab a hold of and, uh, and it would work. And also the other reason is because I'm, I'm collecting only one uh, send for each one of these listens. And so I have a one-to-one -one correspondence there between my sends and listens. Whereas with the, the sends, I was, you know, just taking an entire set of possible listens that it could match with. Um, I see. I see. Uh, so, um, what was the point of the reaction count? Um, yeah, so there, there are different phases with, uh, the, the reaction cell now. And, and again, like, I don't know if the reason that I had to add all these features is because of my naivety and I don't know how to just do this in a much slicker way. Um, but you know, as I was building this, all of it seemed a hundred percent necessary. Um, but either way, so there's, there's a kind of different states for the reaction cell and basically the different states are like, um, you know, uh, again, I have an arbitrary number, uh, you know, an arbitrary number of pieces of information that I need to process in terms of, uh, this listen and, uh, this send go together. So I need to process these together. I have an arbitrary number of listens, right? So, uh, there's, there's kind of a collection phase for the reaction cell, which is basically it's taking all of those matched listens and sends in that receive cell and then basically piling them into this, uh, reaction cell. So, uh, that, that's what's happening kind of during this collection phase. Uh, and then once I have all of the information where I need it to be and where I can do the substitutions, now it's a question of. Were, was the receive uh, persistent or was it consumable? Mm. Uh, was the send persistent or was it consumable? Uh, if the sends are consumable, then what I need to do is as I'm collecting them, 
uh, into the reaction cell. Um, what I'm going to do is basically uh, collect all of these uh, IDs for these consumable sends as I'm, you know, collecting the information into the reaction cell. And then once the reaction is done, I can then go through the tuple space, look at all of the sends that were involved in that reaction and just delete all of them basically before, mm -hmm. before I actually, uh, have that continuation go through. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I think that's more or less what's happening here. And then this reaction count mm -hmm. is is essentially just uh, making sure that I've collected all of the the information that I need to have and making sure that I've actually used all of the information that I wanted to use. Um, and this is the number of uh, of uh, of joints, right? Yeah, exactly. That you, that yeah. you need to replace. Such. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and so. Uh, one thing that I'm having an issue with now is so I have all of these different phases basically where, you know, the receive cell, uh, it, you know, has several phases. Like, is it in a matching phase or, you know, has it matched everything it needs to? And then it moves to like a loading phase where all of the information is being put into the reaction cell and the reaction cell has different phases. Um, and the way that the way that K framework um, initializes everything, if you don't specifically tell it to regard something as a transition, then it doesn't regard it as a transition. And so, uh, you know, well, so what, I have, what does it mean uh, transition? Yeah. So, uh, so when you compile. Uh, K framework definition, right? Like when I compile this definition that I have here, uh, what it's going to do is it, it, they call it like a generator of label transition systems. And uh, what it will do is now any program that you give to it, it will generate a label transition system for that program. Mm -hmm. uh, but basically the default is there are no uh, real transitions basically. Uh, and the reason that's the default is because you have this state space explosion if everything is regarded as a transition. So like all of these rules are, they're not regarded as transitions. So I can't say like, oh, look at this execution path that involves like this load transition because this load uh, label here is just giving this, uh, this rule a name. So, uh, and the point being like, if I would like to regard this as a transition, I can tell K framework, hey, when you compile this definition, uh, this label load, that's a transition, right? I literally just put like a, a flag like dash dash transition and then I tell it load is, is uh, something I wanna consider as a transition. And then basically what it will do is as you're searching through, uh, you know, different states of your program, uh, it will kind of identify those those states through these uh, transitions that you've declared as actual transitions. Mm. So you can you can do things like uh, searching through the execution of a program to see, you know, uh, you know maybe maybe you didn't get exactly what you were expecting. Maybe you got exactly what you were expecting, but you were, uh, you know. Uh, so so one one example is. Mm. Uh, comma events are non-deterministic, right? The only way to capture that non-determinism is to give the rules that describe how the, the comma events are reducing uh, a label, like com, for example, and then you can make comma transition. And then when you actually go to, to search like all of the final states, it will include all of those non-deterministic reductions in your comma events. I see. Whereas uh, if you don't have any labels, it will just give you one of those possible final states. Oh, I see. It, it, it means that uh, uh, with, uh, with this labeling, you, you uh, doesn't change how this works. You, you only change your, your, you're just labeling so you can analyze. Uh, all yeah, this exactly. Right. So if I okay. want to do okay. some sort of mm. state space search, I can, you know, regard mm. this, say for whatever reason, this rule is really important to me, like how these send cells are generated. It's, it's not, but it. let's say it is, uh, then I would, I would make load one of my transitions, 
maybe the only one so I could do a more effective state space search. And then uh, I would be able to see kind of, uh, you know, snapshots of the program execution mm -hmm. that are given to me by this transition. Cool, so, cool. so for example, if somehow, uh, you know, I think the comm event is probably a, a good example to think of um, because it's the most obvious form of non-determinism in rolling. And so if there are, if there's a situation where we have, you know, two sends on the same channel that could match with one potential receive, it's like, well, we have two possible reductions for that comm event, right? Uh, if I don't, label my rule for my comm event, anything in particular, it doesn't regard it as a transition. So I can't even see that there were two possible reductions there. It'll just give me one of them. Uh, but if I want to see all of the possible non-determinism, uh, then I'd have to label it and then, you know, do a state space search and it will literally show me those, those, all of the possible uh, non-deterministic reductions. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. So you're, you're in, in this case, uh, you're labeling sets. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so this was at the, the point in my career when I was just labeling everything, right? Just in case I wanted to do a state space search and look for these rules. So I'm calling these mm -hmm. load rules because they're not really doing anything yet. They're just populating the, the configuration, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, these are not super important. But you can you can also uh, depend. Can, can you can you depend on, on on the result of this labeling in some other constructions? Oh, um, so I'm, that you know, if you remove something previously defined as a label, you know, your program will not work. Yeah. So. Uh, so as far as I understand, the, the program execution should work exactly the same way. Uh, the, the labeling versus non-labeling just gives you more or less ability to search the state space and actually analyze, you know, uh, non-determinism and that sort of stuff. So that's okay. the only thing that I've been using it for is to, uh, is to analyze non-determinism and see all of the possible reductions that could happen. Um, so, so here, mm -hmm. as an example, uh, different than than a comm event. Uh, let me let me find it, and I'll I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, so uh, here's the rule for a, a a listen in a receive matching with a send. Now, it's utterly ridiculous. I mean, this is, you know, 30 lines of code or 35 lines of code just, just to capture that idea, right? But the, the problem is I have all of these cells associated with just one receive and, you know, all of these cells associated with one send. And then I also have to tell it, okay, well, the, the reaction cell is completely uh, void of anything to do computations with. And so this is the, the point in the program where I want to do my matching. Um, and so basically what it's saying is, uh, so I have some receive, so there's some information here to, to keep track of. One of the things to keep track of is how many sends it's actually matched with. Um, and, and that's important because once I get the same number of sends matching as I have uh, kind of, you know, listens in my receive, well, then I've done it. And now I have, a, now I can, you know, process a comm event basically. So if I had two uh, listens that were joined together in my receive, then I need to match with two sends to, to make sure that actually, uh, you know, reduces in a comm event. Um, so what it's saying is, uh, you know, if I have some listen on some channel, which I'm just calling X, right, and, and I have some matching send channel, uh, and I also have, well, here I'm just saying one, uh, one thing is, you know, I'm only sending one thing, so like a single process. Um, then what I'm going to do is in this match send ID cell, uh, so it's initiated with, with, uh, or initialized with just like an empty string. I mean, I just needed to put something there. I just put an empty string there. Uh, cause when, uh, K concretizes the, the configuration, you need to have some sort of information in all of the cells that are concretized. So I just put an empty string in it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, but either way, so so what it's doing is when I see this send that matches with the listen, uh, the listen cell is going to do one thing. The send cell is going to do another thing. So the listen cell uh, changes its match send ID to whatever the ID of that send was, right? So it's basically like, okay, I matched with that send. Great. Uh, And that's the only possible send it can match with because the only way for this rule to apply is if it has the empty string here in this match send ID. Um, And what uh, what the send is gonna do is basically say, all right, I need to somehow record the fact that I could potentially match with this listen someday and, and calm with it. So what I'm going to do is add uh, an element to my set that is just the ID of that listen. And uh, I have to require something in this case. And uh, basically the requirement is going to be that uh, this send ID hasn't already matched with another listen in this receive, right? So again, these receives can have many listens. If this send already matched with some listen in this receive, it can't match again with another listen. And so that's kind of uh, what this rule is saying here. Like uh, I'm adding this element I, which is the, the idea of this send to this set, which is basically telling me you can't possibly match with these again. You've already matched with them. In right. a sense, you're, you're, you're partitioning, right? The, the sets or, or yeah. on, the, on, the, on the group that, that can uh, match and the other group, which is... Exactly, right. And I okay. capture that with this uh, require statement here that's like, uh, you know, it, it requires that it's not the case that I is an S. So uh, I being an S would mean that that send had already matched with another listen in the receive. And so I need that to not be the case basically. Um, and then the other, the other requirement here oh. is the number of listens that are in this particular receive. Well, I need to have matched less times than that strictly to match again, basically. Right. So that's, that's the other requirement here. So as long as I haven't already matched all of the listens, then I can still match. And as long as this particular send hasn't matched one of the listens, then it can go ahead and match it. Cool. Yeah, so, uh, and, cool. and you know, this is basically the rule. Um, you know, whether or not I'm listening for, you know, one name or, or a million names, it, it works exactly the same way. Um, and, and this is a rule uh, exactly for uh, uh, for uh, when you have when you have joints, right? This is exactly rule for that. Yeah. So so uh, and this rule will work whether or not I have joints because if I if there is no join, if it's just like a, a regular receive like from the row calc, uh, then this length will just be one. Right, and then the second I get a single match, it'll just automatically go to to process mm. again. So you you changed your previous implementation. Then yeah, then the configuration you, is you totally had, different now. Yeah, yeah. because I, I remember that you, you have two different uh, notions of uh, of a match with uh, only with one, and uh, when, when you have a join, you, yeah. you have two different. Oh, yeah. Cool. Cool. yeah, yeah. So unfortunately, I couldn't figure out a way to handle joins in the, uh, in the original configuration. And so I was trying my best to, to add as little to the configuration as possible. And like I said, uh, as far as I could tell at the time, all of this uh, additional structure was necessary. Mm. I would really love for it not to be, if I could just, you know, match a list with a list and then make the substitutions happen, like that would be great, but I just don't know how to do it. Yeah, and then the list you you uh, you mean a list of bindings? Yeah, 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 exactly. Of- yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and Not so uh, they're they're like I said, I have a feeling that there's a way to do it with maps or or like some sort of notion of environment or something like that. Uh, it, it it's just not clear to me how to do mm-hmm. it yet. Uh, th- this is part of uh, optimization. You, you must have something to optimize. Yeah, well, yeah, right, exactly. So you know, and the. So, so there's upsides and downsides, of course, to, to this particular implementation that I have. Uh, the upside is it works, right? It, 
it mm. actually captures the non-determinism that it's supposed to uh, in the sense that if, um, well, maybe, maybe I can show you an example. Um, sure. Yeah, but, but in, in the sense that all of the non-determinism from different uh, race conditions, all of that is captured by this implementation. So that's, that's the upside is mm. it, it captured the behavior I wanted it to. Uh, the downside is it captures too much behavior and oh, I see. that makes it really difficult to effectively search the state space and actually see what that non-determinism was, right? Like all of those possible uh, final states because it is considering so many different things as final states and I'm not sure why. And I'm not sure how to how to fix it, and so right. I've I've kind of just left it uh, the way that it is for a while. I see. Um, I see. Yeah, let me just do a quick run through here and see if there's anything else that I wanted to talk about. Um, so nothing here is really different. Nothing here. Yeah, all right. Let me let me see if I can just show you an example. Um, oh, I had uh, I should show you what it actually is, though. Uh, so I don't know if you can see. Yeah, I see. Why does it move now? All right. Uh, yeah. So um, let me see here. I don't know why this won't move. Weird. Uh, it seems like I can't move that out of the way for some reason. Uh, but either way, so uh, so what's happening here is we have uh, two different sends on X, both sending you know three pieces of information. Uh, two sends on Y, both sending one piece of information, and then two sends on Z, both sending one piece of information. And then I have, it uh, looks like a few receives, um, and each of these receives has uh, three listens joined. Uh, so basically, you know, the right number of things on the X channel, uh, the right number of things on the Y channel, right number of things on the Z channel. I'm not even, I'm not even doing anything complicated, like, you know, uh, something like uh, saying that this second element has to be a, a one or something like that. I'm not even doing anything complicated like that. I'm just saying they're all variables. I'm going to substitute all of them in the end. Uh, and I just want that to work. Um, so, uh, yeah, so it looks like here when I did this, right, I declared this matched and initialize, uh, those, those, uh, were my transitions. So we can just look at what the matched and initialized stuff is. So let's look at matched first. Cause I think it's up here. Yeah. So, okay. Um, so the point of match is right. So this looks like it really doesn't even do anything basically. Um, all this is saying is when I have a receive, uh, that has matched the same number of things that it has listens for. So like if it's a, a join of three listens and it's matched three sends, right, then okay, I can start processing that as a comma event and start doing the reduction and the substitution and everything that follows. Um, but to initiate or initialize that process of saying like, hey, this is the one that I want to actually, you know, reduce the, the state of the receive changes from just being, you know, this empty string is basically like, oh, it's in the matching phase. It's still searching for sends or whatever. Uh, and it switches to the matched state, which basically is saying like, okay, I know that I've matched all of the listens with uh, available sends. And now I'm going to start pulling all of that information into the reaction cell. So that's what this matched one does. And the reason that I made this uh, one of the labels is because I was thinking, I'm looking at this example. Uh, there are two 
So there's two possible uh, receives, right? So here's one listening for three things. Here's another one listening for three things. And basically the point was, it could be the case that these both get the right number of matches at exactly the same time, right? And so I want it to be possible that this one goes first and, you know, is declared a match and that com processes, uh, or this one goes first and that match, you know, uh, is, or in that, that com processes. So basically, uh, so I wanted this to be a label in my transition system so I could uh, account for the non-determinism that could come from one matching over, over the other, basically. I see. And the initialized rule, I think, yeah, I think it's just the same thing. But uh, so, yeah, I have multiple. Um, so, so the code is repetitive just because of how the uh, syntactic categories were defined. So, uh, unfortunately, I have a syntactic category called name, and that's literally like one name. And then I have another syntactic category called names nice. with an S on the end. And that's one of two possibilities, unfortunately. It's either two things or it's, you know, an arbitrary number of things more than two. Um, but either way, so every, every piece of code that I write, I always have to write it for like one message or one name. Mm -hmm. And then I always have to write it for any number of names that's, you know, bigger than one essentially. Uh, but they're literally just copy and paste it anyways. Um, and can you can you use maybe this uh, uh, the same technique that you are using on on a match? Yeah. When you have, you know, when when you have this uh, uh, when you uh, when you have this uh, uh, number of bindings as a, as a list. So if you, if it is only one, you will have a list with one. Can you do maybe something like that? With yeah. So that was that was the a way that that was the way that I originally tried to implement joins was basically just keeping or um, that was the way that I originally was trying to uh, implement listening for just multiple things. Um, and then I tried to extend it to joins. And um, what was the Yeah, I think you I, already talk about this, but I, I for, forgot. Yeah. yeah, honestly, and and that's the thing is, uh, it's been a while since I've thought about it, so I'm trying to remember why it is that I uh, ultimately went with something different. Um, yeah, well, uh, so here's the thing, right? Is that I feel like I've managed to uh, get working the most complicated possible implementation. And so now, uh, hopefully, anything from here is just going to be like a major improvement to what I have currently working. Um, yeah. So so uh, so let me see what we're doing here. So okay. So this is my initialized transition, and basically, uh, okay. Um, the initialized transition is essentially saying that uh, okay. So so once the the receive knows that it's matched the right number of things and it starts uh putting some information into this reaction cell the the state changes to collection and basically that's just to signify that it's moving information into this reaction cell at this point um and what we're going to do in the case of uh, so this this type zero on uh the reaction is basically just telling me that this is a consumable uh, receive. It's like a, a, a linear listen or whatever you want to call it, right? And, and so because it's uh, a consumable, what I'm going to do is as I pull each one of these listens, you know, the information from each one of these listens, so basically like what variables are getting substituted uh, and what the channel was, I'm going to pull all of that information into the reaction cell and also just delete this information now because it's ultimately going to be consumed. So I can just go ahead and delete it from uh, this, this receive cell immediately. 
And um, it looks like I'm also dealing with uh, consumable send here. That's also what the send type zero is. And so I'll also just delete this as I am uh, processing this information. Oh, right. Uh, so this forget cell down here in, uh, in the reaction is essentially telling me that this listen could have matched with several different sends, right? Because remember, the, the way that the sends were working was they were just collecting all of the like identifiers uh, for listens that it could potentially match with, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, what, what I'm going to do is as I'm deleting this listen, right, it no longer exists. So I now have all of these sends that think that they could potentially match with this thing that no longer is, exists. And uh, so what I'm going to do is collect the, the um, you know, ID number of that listen in this set here. And then when I go to this uh, forget phase, what I'm going to do is look for all of the listens that have this particular um, you know, uh, sorry, all of the sends that have that particular listen ID and just delete it from, from their uh, kind of collection of things that they match with, right? So this listen got deleted, it no longer exists. Uh, so I need to now go to all the sends that thought they could potentially match with that listen and then delete that information from all of those sends. I see. So there's like a, a forget okay. phase after I collect each one of the, uh, these listens into the reaction cell. Um, can I can I ask you some, uh, more about uh, the syntax? Uh, yeah, yeah. For for, ex for example, uh, uh, this collect and the arrow to forget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what exactly this syntax with the arrow? Uh, yeah. So so this the arrow is uh, is basically the the rewrite rule, right? I'm I'm defining the left and the right side for uh, a, a rewriting a term here, and that term is. Uh, the configuration, right? Uh, so something that K does really well is uh, this configuration abstraction. So you'll notice that I only have to say that I'm interested in this particular receive. I'm only interested in this particular send that is contained in some cell that could have like millions of sends in it. Uh, and I capture all of those by these three dots. I, it's just, uh, they call it a cell frame variable. Uh, so the, the, the three dots are basically like, just match anything else that I didn't explicitly write here. Um, and then I also care about the, the reaction cell and, and what's there. And so because of configuration abstraction, I only need to list the, I only need to explicitly write the stuff that I care about. Right. And, and I did the same thing with the, um, the cell frame variable here in the, the listen cell because there could be you know 50 different listens but i only care about this one that's matching with the channel in this particular send um so with uh with these arrows right like you, you were saying for for this particular one uh basically what i'm saying is uh so 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 k does that really well the uh, configuration abstraction and it also does this kind of uh, rewrite rule abstraction really well where I didn't have to even write uh, what this rewrites to, right? If, if I don't put uh, an arrow here, it just implicitly knows that it's rewriting to itself, essentially. Um, mm -hmm. And the other great thing is I didn't have to have like, this is all of the stuff in the configuration on the left side of the rewrite, and this is all of the stuff on the right side. I can kind of mix it a little bit. Uh, so for example, the, the left side of the configuration is going to have anything that appears on the left side of one of these arrows. The right side is going to have anything that appears on the right side of one of these arrows. Uh, but it allows me to display it all kind of within one cell. So instead of writing, you know, a reaction cell strictly on the left side, and that would contain like P, this empty string, this empty string, J, this zero, this collect, and this empty set. Um, and then on the right side, that reaction cell that corresponds to the, to the one I'm rewriting on the left side would contain a, a, a P, a Q, a Y, a J, a one, forget, and then this, you know, uh, set S, you know, that I'm doing the, the, uh, this difference of. 
So instead of having to write like everything out explicitly, like here's the left side of the rewrite rule, here's the right side, uh, I can just do everything all at once, basically. Oh, I see. Yeah. Oh, so, so you're saying you don't have to repeat uh, your, the whole reaction cell. That's right, uh, that's right, no. yeah. yeah. Just uh, uh, like a, uh, you can just say what uh, cell inside the reaction you can just uh, uh, transform. That's right, yeah, exactly. Cool, cool, yeah. Cool. And you, yeah. Can, you can do it in, in a send, right? everywhere you can you can do this everywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah and so uh, and so this one's a little bit different because uh, what I'm saying here is the left side is actually the send cell and then the right side is well basically just delete that. oh the whole oh now it makes sense this, this arrow here oh yeah, yeah. The, yeah. It, it's the same arrow right yeah yeah like, exactly. on, on, the on, on, on the different yep. level on, on the different level that's right. Oh, yeah. And, cool. and that, that's the really cool. beautiful thing about K is it's, it's, there's only mm. one rewrite rule, right? It's that arrow. That's it. Uh, cool. And it only is ever working with the configuration, like whether or not, uh, so let me, let me show you an example of what I mean by that. So here I'm, I'm clearly explicitly mm. working with pieces of the configuration. Um, but sometimes the rules don't even look like they have anything to do with the configuration. Uh, so something like this, so like my rule for, you know, adding two integers like what does that have to do with a configuration well basically uh without this anywhere attribute uh what this rule is telling me is if this int plus in appears at the top level of a k cell then this rule applies right so if i put just a, a rule not specifying the location and the configuration or anything it only applies in the top level of the k cell uh, because I put this anywhere attribute, it can apply in any cell I want it to. I see. Yeah. And so if, then, not, if you don't have anywhere, it's it will not apply in nowhere, <laughs> right? Uh, what's that? Only, only uh, if you don't if you don't uh, have this uh, anywhere attribute, it will apply yeah. only on top level, right? Yeah, so if I don't have the anywhere attribute, the only place for the rule to be applied is in this case cell. That's it. Mm. Right, because uh, the, the way that the, the parser works is it parses the program, right, stores it as this, this variable uh, $PGM, and then I'm, I'm specifically telling it like, hey, by the way, that better have parsed as a process. Uh, if it didn't, then let me know there was some sort of syntax error, essentially. Um, and once it parses as a process, it puts that abstract syntax tree into this K cell. And, and that's basically where all of the computations happen. I see. I see. Um, yeah. unless, uh, unless you have this ridiculous configuration that has all of these different cells that are not K cells. And then you can do things like, you know, uh, make, make it create cells uh, that have no, well, okay, so this one had something to do with the K cell, right? Because I was basically like, once you see any send at the top of uh, a K cell, delete it, right? That's what the arrow to the dot means. So delete that thing, but at the same time that you delete it, in the, the multi-set of send cells, create this particular send cell. Right, so this rule, is, yeah, yeah, this rule is complicated. So it's basically saying uh, there, there are only two pieces of the configuration that I care about here, and that is uh, a K cell in any thread I want. Right, I didn't even specify that it's in a thread or anything like that. Uh, so the, the abstraction takes care of that stuff. Uh, so it's like anytime you see a send in any K cell, go ahead and delete it and then just put the relevant information into a create a send cell that contains all of the relevant information oh i see yeah and then basically the same thing with with a receive right like you know when you see a receive uh dissolve it from the the computation and create this uh cell that contains all that information and when you say a dot bag you are creating this like a, from nothing yeah, yeah, exactly. But, it's, uh, but, so, so, but yeah. You just deleted the, the send, so you're creating this for. Yeah, exactly. So, so dot bag oh, is just yeah. like, um, so I'm, so the configurations, uh, okay, so 
the configure the cells in the configurations that get this multiplicity star. Uh, so multiplicity star means that there could be zero or more of these particular cells, right? So it is possible to generate a configuration, and and this is the um, the default configuration. Like if I were to um, just parse like nil or something, and and then have have this run. Uh, I mean, I can I can show you what that configuration would look like. Uh, let me let me do that real quick because that'll that'll make a lot more sense than me just saying what will happen. Uh, so I'm just gonna give it nil. That's the only thing that I'm gonna put into it, and I'm not in the right spots. So let me get to the right spot. Um, this is it. So I'll run that. And in, in this case, you don't have any uh, rule to apply, right? You, you uh, just have... Yeah, basically, uh, so what it's gonna do is it will, it will parse it, uh, you know, recognize it as a process, so it'll pass the syntax check at least. Uh, it'll load that nil into the K cell, and then, uh, I believe, let me see if I can move this thing. No, I can't. Um, gosh, I wish I had a better way to scroll here. There it is. Uh, so, yeah, so I have this rule that tells me anytime you see nil, uh, basically just delete it. It's computationally oh. meaningless. Um, but this is if you see nil at the top of a K cell, right? So like if you're sending nil on some channel, well, that's different. Um, but if you just see nil by itself, uh, it's an empty computation, right? So the dot, dot, uh, dot structure sort, whatever you want to call it type, uh, is just the unit of that type, right? So, so K is, uh, you know, the computations. So this is just the, the unit of computations. Oh, I see. Yeah. And then specifically, uh, what it's telling me is, uh, so I mean, another, another rule that I have is anytime I see a thread with a computation cell that's, that's effectively empty, it just has that computational unit in it, delete it. So I should have all empty cells possible, basically, is, is what will happen. So let's go ahead and uh, see what so happens. So a dot set is an empty set. Yeah, right, exactly. Dot map is the empty map. Yep. Cool. Yeah, so here, um, so one thing about the reaction cell is that it's always there, right? So the reaction cell is here. Uh, there's just, you know, dot Ks basically in all of those, uh, you know, sub cells. Um, but you see, this is like dot thread cell bag, right? So, uh, the 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 red threads cell contains a, a multi set of thread cells, right? Um, but what I did was, you know, loaded nil in. It was just an empty computation, and then I deleted that thread because that was another rule, right? And so basically, it's like, well, uh, it, there's just nothing in this thread cell bag, so this is empty, and that's why it's you know dot thread cell bag. And then same thing here, right? I uh, have sends and receives. The sends and receives cell are always there. It's just one cell, uh, but they contain a multi-set of send cells and a multi-set of, of receive cells. And But they're also empty because, well, there just wasn't anything there, right? And uh, the dot in reaction uh, really means dot K. Yeah, but exactly, K, yeah. You don't have to specify K. You don't have to specify, yeah. So if, if I were to just write that, it would it would parse just the same. Cool, cool. Yeah, I do that just so I remember what's going on. Mm. Yeah, and like I have much better understanding. <laughs> oh, cool, great. Yeah, and and even here, like I, you don't need to write bag. Like it, it will know from context that it's a a multi set. Oh, you know, cool. It that it's a multi set. This is cool. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, from and, from the context, right? You, you, oh, yeah. This right, one. and and in the same way, uh, I. Uh, I think I program in an overly safe manner where I sort check literally everything and it's just not necessary because it does have inference, right? Uh, so 
I additionally require it at runtime to sort check all of this stuff that it's appearing here. Um, it, but for me, it, it makes it, it makes more sense. It makes me think about exactly what's going on. And I also think if someone else were to look at this, they wouldn't be confused by what in the world I'm putting here, right? Like clearly yeah. I'm putting a name and names and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. It's, it's yeah. much clearer. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so I mean, it's uh, you know just <laughs> basically a bunch of those rules uh, over and over and over and over. Um, you know, just like how to uh, uh, yeah. Oh, here you go. Yeah, like dot set right. It's just the empty set. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really know exactly what else to show you. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe, well, I don't know. It's almost one o'clock as well. So maybe, maybe that's enough for today. Um, yeah, this, this is totally cool because I'm, I'm thinking that, uh, this is exactly what we want, right? Uh, you know, we, we want to have, uh, language specification with all the rules. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Have all the rules. Mm -hmm. This is like a clean way to, to represent this. Yeah, I, I really like uh, the the rewrite logic uh, style of K framework. I think it makes it super easy to understand what's going on, um, because it's you're not leaving it up to any interpretation whatsoever, right? It's just like here's the left hand side of the rule, here's the right hand side. Like anytime you see this, rewrite it to this, and that's it. It's not complicated, um, but somehow it captures. Uh, all program behavior, right? Like it's it's uh, a sufficiently general yet simple thing. So it's just like incredibly powerful. Uh, uh, I'm thinking how 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 can I in Haskell uh, represents uh, this uh, in in a similar way? You yeah. know, for for each uh, for for each uh, rule that that you that you want to specify that uh, how how can you know. Uh, how to extract this and, and, and say, uh, for example, uh, uh, how to define it in different modules, for example. Uh -huh. Because, you know, you want to extend your language. You, you can say, okay, I, I have these basic rules, but I have these special rules, for example, uh, with the extension of, uh, of uh, context and, you know, you, now, you, now you have different reduction. So yeah. how to just, you know, uh, have this, this core and, that, and, and then uh, just... Uh, uh, add uh, different behaviors and this is especially complicated when you have when you want when you want simultaneously extend the parser and the semantics yeah the and, that's semantics. The... and in the case it's really exactly to, uh, a tool to do this uh, yeah absolutely because you just define uh kind of abstractly what your syntax is and it generates the parser for you which is incredible yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's great because then you can, you can abstractly change your syntax. Like they, uh, every time he's talking about, uh, doing, you know, a formal definition for like what, you know, like a real programming language, like not some like little simple thing that just has a couple rules. Um, he always, you know, um, he always emphasizes the fact that the syntax that we're defining is the syntax for the semantics, right? Like it doesn't have to be exactly identical to the syntax of the, the language itself. It's the syntax that's necessarily, uh, that's necessary to capture all of the semantic rules of the language. Hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. I didn't understand what he was talking about at first. Um, but it makes sense because, uh, so um, I think Glenn was asking me some questions about how I would like prevent certain situations because I had left things like sufficiently general. And um, he was asking me kind of like I had, a, you know, evaluating like some name variable. So like star X plus five. And I think he was asking me things like, well, how do you know that you're going to get an integer that you can add that five to? Um, and essentially my answer was, well, it doesn't have any defined semantics if it's not an integer. If it is an integer, then it makes sense and, and the semantics have been defined. Uh, but mm -hmm. if, 
it's not an integer, well, then it's just going to stop the computation because there is no rule to tell it, it how to operate it. from that point. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, this is exactly what the type system is doing. Yeah. It's saying right. there is no rule to. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it's interesting, and I'm not a hundred percent clear on how how a type system would differ from what I'm doing already, um, because it it almost feels like I'm building a type system almost in parallel with the the semantics and the syntax that 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 I'm mm. developing. And then this is also uh, visible in. Uh, in a Quark's example uh, mm. uh, of uh, of a linear type system. Oh, but, cool! But uh, but that is not uh, this part of uh, linear. Just, yeah. just to, to to the logic of you know how you how you treat types and how you make unification. It's yeah. it's very similar to me. It's very similar to what you are doing in, in K frame. Oh, cool! Yeah, yeah, I should definitely look at his stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I yeah, it's it's one of those things like. Um, I don't have the the vocabulary yet to understand um, what people are talking about when they talk about very specific type systems, um, you know, and, and clearly just something that I will improve on in time. Um, but yeah, that, that makes it really difficult to kind of look at, um, I don't know, I guess examples that, that people have built and really extract some meaning from them, you know? Yeah, and then especially, you know, he's using an algorithm that is, uh, you know, already known, but uh, yeah, you must, you must go into details to, to understand everything. Yeah. So yeah. I, I'm, my, my conclusion is not from, from exactly that perspective. It's, it's yeah, more about, yeah. you know, uh, this part looks something like, you know, this. Oh, one. yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, <laughs> I cannot say anything. I, I absolutely agree with that. Like, uh, I always, you know, as, as someone coming from mathematics, right, uh, and, and I'm not saying that this is how all people in math think or, or operate, uh, but I always feel like I don't understand something unless I can bring it back to first principles, basically. Uh, and I really like K framework for that reason, because you are defining with whatever granularity you want to, how the computation is working. And you are literally defining like, when I'm at this thing, then I go to this thing, you know, you're like exactly the, the steps of the computation. Um, and it's almost like it leaves nothing to the imagination because you tell it exactly the execution path to take, you know? Mm. And in, in, in a sense, uh, yeah, uh, I, I think that it's in a sense it's similar to, uh, to this kind of uh, towers of interpreters, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because you, you, you're working with syntax uh, very, very, in a very similar way mm -hmm. because you... Uh, you, you, you literally have in, in the same pile syntax which which you call in in, in a row, right? Yeah. This uh, this way of uh, uh, recognizing syntax in, in your semantics, which yeah. some sort of reflection, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, so the only thing that I've read about reflection and uh, and and maybe <clears throat> maybe my problem is. I just don't have sufficient experience to appreciate what reflection uh, gives us. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, and, and the other problem is coming in kind of so late in the game, uh, I hear about these ideas like reflection and uh, and K framework. And I'm just like, why aren't these, why haven't these things been a thing for 50 years at this point, you know, like I just don't, it doesn't make sense, you know, like why is functional programming yeah. such a, such a new paradigm? Like it doesn't make sense. It, it's like those things just make so much sense to me that they would be that way that I can't imagine how, how they would be otherwise. And, and also I just don't have the experience with, uh, you know, any imperative or, uh, or object oriented, um, stuff to, to kind of, you know, contrast mm -hmm. with. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, you, you must feel confined 
you know, <laughs> to, to appreciate freedom. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's, that's true, right? You don't know freedom unless, uh, unless you know prison or whatever. <laughs> yeah. At least, uh, at least this is uh, uh, in, in programming, you know. <laughs> we have yeah. some, some, yeah. some uh, very, very uh, uh, basic type type system which you know, doesn't allow you much of, of things to do. So you, you, when, when you when you when you uh, find out that you can do something uh, on the side, you know, which will uh, gives yeah. you a way to generate something or read uh, in a more general way, you know, you're you're happy. <laughs> Yeah, um, you know what I was thinking might might uh, be of interest to to you and some other people is um, so uh, the the K framework organization they have several example languages that they've written up in K and they're kind of easier uh, you know one of them is called simple and it's uh, it's an imperative language and it has some features of imperative languages like um, you know variable declarations um, you know environment stores like array uh, references um, uh, statements uh, blocks expressions you know that sort of stuff and uh, they also do so. Their their simple is uh, is a concurrent imperative language. So they have you know spawning threads and and joining threads mm. and uh, rendezvous and that sort of stuff. Mm. Um, it might be interesting for us to like collectively look at it because I look at it and I understand more or less the the syntax of, of K and kind of what the rules are supposed to mean. Uh, but like I said, I don't have the experience to then relate it back to something I've done. Mm. And uh, that makes it hard for me to appreciate and it makes it hard for me to um, maybe get exactly what the point is that they're trying to make, you know? Um, mm. I yeah, see, so, I see. Uh, yeah. they, and they have one for, hmm. for, uh, some functional, uh, you know, they made up a, a functional language, um, that, that has, you know, the constructors and, and, you know, all of the, the features of hmm. a functional language and, uh, how, how you translate those rules into, into K. Uh, well, they okay. have, they have an you, object oriented as well. What's up? Uh, can you, can you put this uh, links in, in Discord? So. Oh, I'm yeah. interested to, to oh, absolutely. It. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe we can do it uh, the next time. Yeah. Okay, cool. That, that would be great. Yeah. And, you know, I think if you want to do something like that by yourself, you probably have to start with the tutorial videos. Uh, they, they have a really good series of tutorial videos. Um, and, I mean, but, you know, it's like a few hours of videos, basically, just to kind of get up to speed with. Uh, okay. And maybe, you know, like, you know much more about K-Framework right now than I did coming into it. So maybe maybe you wouldn't have to do all of that stuff. Um, yeah, no, no, no. It's much easier for me to follow. After, yeah, after so cool. all of your, your, your explanation, I, I feel that, you know, I can, I can start typing uh, K-Framework. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and you probably could, honestly. <laughs> well, I'm not sure completely, but... <laughs> Well, I could write some rules, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe uh, this is simple, simple stuff. Uh, maybe, maybe I can understand that. Yeah. Yeah. But, but uh, I, I, would, I would definitely love to, to do it uh, with you. Uh, you yeah. Know? I think, I think that would be really cool because, uh, you know, you or other people can maybe help me contextualize some of the mm. stuff that they're doing and understand why it's important. And, and I can maybe explain what the actual case syntax is is doing for yeah, us and yeah, why, yeah. why that's cool and uh, can we generate uh, the compiler and then we have this language oh sure yeah why not <laughs> oh this is cool <laughs> yeah so uh so k automatically oh he's got diagrams everywhere it automatically just from the syntax and semantics generates a parser, a compiler, an interpreter, like all of the like tools that you would need to like have an actual instance of a language. It generates all of that mm. stuff for free basically. Um, and even even better than that, just from the, the operational semantics that you're defining, you know, like the rewrite rules on the term level, um, it also generates 
program verification tools, uh, which is something I just recently mm -hmm. learned how to how to work with, which is pretty cool. Uh, so something that I was able to to prove, verify, whatever is uh, in this like really really simple imperative language that I have. Um, I wrote you know, using while loops and I wrote, uh, a formula for, you know, give me some number N and I'll give you the sum from one to N basically. And, uh, so proving that the sum of the first N integers is, you know, N times N plus one over two, the, the program verifier will actually prove that for you given, you know, some Ooh. invariance back in some like, here's the initial state and here's what I claim the final state is. And it'll actually go through and, and prove that that's, that is the case. Mm, this is cool. Yeah. yeah. So I, I did it for that mm. and I did it for uh, sum of squares. So, you know, there's like the formula for the, the sum of the first n integers and there's, there's a, a formula for the sum of the first n squares of integers. So like one squared plus two squared all the way up to n squared. Uh, yeah. And it's something like, mm n uh n times n plus one times two n plus one over six or something along those lines but i have uh you know almost the same exact spec written out and uh and have gotten k to, to actually verify it so it's kind of cool and yeah. i found this uh project i think it's through dap hub uh called k lab and they're currently working on some sort of graphical thing for the the k k proof for their verification tool um so i think mm. so that you can do some debugging in your in your uh proofs uh when you're using this wow. verification tool so that sounds pretty cool i'm gonna start talking to yeah. those guys about um about maybe helping them or, or just you know trying to use their their software a little bit yeah this sounds interesting yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, we have something for, for, for the next one. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So if nobody if nobody says anything else, we can uh, we can just plow through some uh, K code. Cool, cool. Awesome. Uh, uh, yeah, you, you, you can you can post some links uh, if, if you if you think yeah, it's uh, yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll easy for introduction so I can I can go through that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I'll cool. I'll put the link cool. to uh, the the spot on their GitHub that has I mean it'll have so the, the ones that I'm thinking of are kind of uh, uh, more complicated definitions, uh, but there's several way simpler ones that you can look at on their GitHub. And I also have some of them on, on my, uh, in, in my K-Framework uh, repository. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll take a look. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. man. All right, cool. yeah, I'll, uh, I'll throw those links in Discord. And uh, hey, man, it's uh, been, a, been a pleasure as usual. Oh, you need to. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you next time, Thomas. Love. See you. See you. See you, man. Uh, Jim. Jim. Bye. Yeah, Jim. <laughs> Thanks, man. See ya.